We are live and recording. Okay, I'm gonna stand up so people can hear me. But good evening, everybody. Um, it's uh, it's six thirty, so we're gonna call our meeting mm -hmm. order. This is a, a regularly scheduled select board meeting. We got a couple of items of business very quick, and we're gonna move right to law enforcement, which I'm assuming we're we'll here for tonight. Uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. So we're gonna we're gonna. Get a couple of items out of the way, and then we'll turn right to law enforcement. We've got a, a few statements to make before we kick that off. So, in here, um, for our meeting tonight, Paul, we call the meeting to order. Any additions to the agenda tonight? Karen, are you aware of any? No. Okay. Any conflicts of interest that we see on the agenda? Okay. So we are going to get into law enforcement. One of the things on our agenda that we usually have is just public comments. And this is by far many, many more people than we've seen at a select board meeting. So are, are there any public comments not related to law enforcement that anybody's here to make this evening? Okay, great. And can everybody hear me okay? Excellent. So thank you all for being, I'm just gonna kind of kick this off. I think as we put out in the social media that we put out there, we're, you know, the select board's doing this as a beginning of a conversation uh, about law enforcement. We all understand, we feel it as select board members um, and as members of the community. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on in our town that we're all concerned about, um, a lot of emotions. Um, we've had some conversations with both uh, Vermont State Police and in uh, Orange County, Captain Zanonos is on uh, is attending virtual tonight, and so we really wanted to start having a conversation about where we go. And actually, tonight, what we're really trying to do as a board is to find out what resources are out there from BSP, Orange County, ultimately maybe others, and subsequent conversations of what we may be able to do. Um, the town of Chelsea currently has a contract signed, I believe, about last year, about this time, with Orange County for $12,500. Um, and if you do the math, that's, be that's, that's between three to four hours worth of coverage a week. Um, and so that's not a significant amount of coverage and we recognize that as a board. So uh, obviously we're, we even have a canine visitor. Um, so we recognize that as a board and we want input from everybody. Um, but so some of the questions that we've asked tonight, um, Sorry, um, some of the uh, the uh, questions that we've asked I just want to be clear that we're hoping to get from both BSP and Orange County tonight are um, what coverage do you currently provide? Um, if the town had additional financial resources, could you provide more? 
Um, and if so, what type of resources could you provide? What are the things that the select board might be able to do and or pursue to help our residents regarding this concern? Are there programs or resources out there beyond law, of course, that we should be considering? Or the recommendations or best practices, things that maybe law enforcement would recommend to any of us uh, as residents that we could do um, to, you know, to improve safety and, and help maybe help address some of these concerns on our own properties type of thing. Um, and then, you know, it was just what else might be. So we're fortunate that the Lieutenant Bart from uh, Parton from uh, Vermont State Police and Captain Zanonos from Orange County are here with us tonight. So what what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm I'm going to let them introduce themselves. One thing that I would say, uh, we're really looking at this is how do we move forward? And I know folks have a lot of concerns, and I don't want to minimize those at all. Um, but there's a lot of recent events that have happened. We we the board are not here tonight to quiz these two gentlemen on. What are you doing? What's happening? What? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you there? We're trying to really look forward and project forward on what we can do as a community in terms of law enforcement. We will obviously get to questions. When we do get to questions, I, I really appreciate it if folks would raise their hand before speaking, just so that we can kind of keep some order. Um, and, and when your questions are addressed, you've had this in other meetings, you know, when your questions are addressed, definitely we're going to try to make sure they're addressed. Sometimes people have that urge to turn around from the crowd and dress the person behind you. Let's try to keep it somewhat orderly if we can, um, which would be great. We don't want to limit conversation at all, but what we will do is we're going to give everybody that wants to speak a chance to speak. Um, so if you've already spoken, please wait your turn. We want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity uh, to speak or, or ask questions uh, before we before we go back to some who spoke before. And because there are so many people here tonight, because this is part of a regularly scheduled select board meeting, we're hoping that you could try to keep your comments brief. Again, we're not trying to minimize or limit folks, uh, you know, need to hear what's going on or, or, or you know, frankly, or, or anger or whatever that you have, we're not trying to limit that at all, but we just want to make sure we give an opportunity. And I'll close by saying, um, I can't emphasize enough, we're viewing this as the beginning of a conversation. Um, we know that this is something that we're, you know, we need to move forward with sooner than later, but we also realize that this is something that Part, part of this is going to be more long-term solutions as well. So before I, is there anything I may have missed? I just want to, we really want comments to be made up at the table so that they can be picked up and everybody can hear them and they will be captured on the recording. We find that they don't if people are out in the audience. So we're asking you to come up to the table so that you'll be on camera and the comments can be heard. Right. That, that's a good point. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, because we're streaming live and there's a number of residents that I can see. I don't know how many are on there. Plus, Lieutenant Zanonos is, is on here as well. So if, if, if you if you do have comments, please come up here to make your comments. No, no it's okay. No, that's, what, that's what Kelly was saying. No, I wasn't correct. You don't repeat what she was saying. So, um, so with that, um, maybe, Lieutenant Harden, we could kick it off with you and... and and maybe introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Um, hello, Lieutenant uh, Jerry Parsons. Uh, excuse my speech. I got braces and I got big lips, so I, I run in. And so if I need something repeated, just let me know. Uh, I slur a lot. Um, so I was recently transferred from the St. Albans Barracks. I was a station commander up there for five years. Uh, great barracks up there. Uh, due to uh, command options, so that has come down to the Royal Open. I was here in 2018 for six months as a patrol commander in the Royal Barracks. So I've been here a month and a half. I'm just trying to get some groundwork. So the lay of the land, the human mapping, I guess you could call it, for our area of operation. I'm going through a meeting each town and um, the town administrators or select boards. And conveniently, conveniently enough, I was asked to come in. So that this is one of the first four towns I've spoken to already. So looking forward to an engaged discussions. Um, please keep in mind, I'm still trying to learn uh, from you, from the <coughs> community, and, and from the troopers that I'm here with and how this barracks operates, and then trying to get my vision in place at the uh, Royalton Barracks. 
Uh, so I look forward to engaged, thoughtful, calm minds, calm speech, uh, so I can learn from you. Can Lieutenant Zanolis talk? Yeah. Okay. Well, he's not here in person. We do have, uh, and I apologize, uh, Captain Zanolis, if I'm getting your name incorrect. I don't know if you want to right. introduce you. Feel free to call me the lady. Are you able to hear uh, me? Yes, we can hear you. And if you don't mind, just a, a brief introduction, that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Um, my name is Lenny Zanonos, and uh, I came on board. George Comtoy, who knew the actual sheriff, did ask me to take a command position, and I agreed to do so. We've had some challenges in trying to rebuild the department, but we're getting there, and uh, we're in much better shape than we were back in February. I would like to emphasize that we are not your primary law enforcement agency. Vermont State Police are, and I think they do a very, very good job considering their shortage in manpower also. Uh, we are experiencing the same thing. Um, we, try to, uh, we try to wave the flag as much as possible. We try to take proactive measures when we know of issues that are going on in certain areas of the town. But there's very little that we can really do effectively with three and a half hours a week. Um, we've had the conversation with the board about increasing the budget within reason. Um, I think our role really is to try and take care of issues, antisocial issues and so forth, and be a vector for a VSP to deal with the more serious crimes. I'm happy to take questions from anybody that has it. So uh, I think what we might do is, is um, if, if we could just talk briefly, maybe just go down through these questions just briefly in terms of, uh, you know, and, and maybe start with VSP, you know, what coverage you currently provide, just to kind of give us a lay of the land of, of what VSP, the presence that you have in Chelsea. Uh, sure, and, you know, you want to go to staffing as well? As sure, yeah. To that. Okay, yes. Um, so um, we cover 20 towns in this area of operation. And for the 20 towns, many towns have, as you can imagine, uh, problems, lots of problems, lots of issues. We have on a given day and a given night, three troopers to cover 20 towns. And so my troopers are basically what we like to be is proactive in, in front of the problems. Uh, unfortunately, what we're doing right now is responding to the problems. It's not ideal. Um, so as calls come in, um, I can give you many different examples. I try to keep this short. We can scenario this up all day. Uh, let's just let's say there's a, a family fight, a domestic. Uh, that's already going to automatically take two, possibly, a lot of times three troopers. As I just uh, said, my shift is three troopers for that day or that night, okay? If there's an arrest made, it's two troopers to process that probably for the rest of the shift, it's a, if it's the beginning of the shift. Not to get into details about court and the paperwork and the procedures, uh, it's just what it is. Um, we're a victim to that, that machine. Uh, so the three troopers during the day, three at night, they're basically going from call to call. And so we're, we're always playing behind. And if they can get to calls um, for initial, unfortunately now we have to triage. Uh, so we may not be able to get to an initial contact once the call comes, comes in. We base everything on emerging calls right now because of our shortage and our challenges in staffing. So we'll take the most emergent and then go back from there, property crimes and so forth. Uh, there's all kinds of things under the sun that aren't criminal that we still have to deal with. People in uh, mental health crises, uh, people threatening uh, to commit suicide and, and other, uh, we can go on and on forever. If somebody's threatening to commit suicide, it could take a shift and into the next shift as well. All three troopers, and at times myself and maybe even the captain. Um, so that being said, uh, we still try to be as proactive as we can. Every town has their needs, every 
town has with speeding complaints. Unfortunately, every town has multiple houses where they suspect drugs are being dealt out of. Okay. Um, these investigations take a long time, and we can talk more about that. Um, and I'll leave some more thoughts on that as we go. We are 40% down for my staffing at the barracks. That's almost half. Okay. 40% is a huge number. So what we're having to do is bring in troopers from other barracks to fill shifts. So you'll have two originating troopers out of the barracks on every given day, but probably a trooper from Westminster or Rutland or Berlin will come down and help out. Now those troopers who are visiting for that day, they have to go back the next day, okay? You can see where investigations become lengthened because they have to come back in the area. They're playing by telephone, trying to investigate a case up in Chelsea or wherever from Westminster. Um, uh, I'll stop there. I could go on all night about our challenges, not, not pity us. I'll tell you this, we're doing our best and the troopers have a good attitude and the morale is high. Um, and we're trying to think of outside the box ways about how we can be more present um, which, um, being here a short amount of time, I've had a discussion with my patrol commanders and my troopers as of late about how you're going to increase the presence here. And you'll see an uptick in, in cruisers here. Please engage the troopers. Please talk. If you have something to say, if you see something, say something. If there's information that you can provide the troopers, they, we can get other units in here that are specialized in certain investigations then we need that information. Engage my troops, okay? That's awesome, thank you. But just, is is it mostly from VSPs that just response to calls in terms of your presence here in Chelsea or, or any community? Is that really? Yeah. That with, those, with those staffing challenges you mentioned? Yeah, and the sheriff could provide some information on this. Uh, or Captain Lieutenant, I'm sorry. Captain. It's all right, Captain. just pull me the line. It's fine. Hey, Lenny, there, Lenny can uh, provide some information on that. It's different. Uh, every town has different stipulations on the contracts with the sheriff's department. Okay. And some could be just uh, traffic and some could be full service traffic and answering calls. Usually when the counties are in the areas of operation of the towns uh, on, on shit, uh, VSP won't respond, the deputy will take those calls. Once the deputies go out of service, then we're back in charge of responding to calls at the town. Okay. Uh, we want to be in a cooperative effort with the sheriff's department at any point in time. Um, so because of our staffing challenges, we have current contracts around the state with towns. Okay. But my command staff does not want us taking uh, onboarding any new contracts because we just don't have the staff staffing to do it. The contracts that we currently have, we can't uh, fill those hours currently. But some of the towns that we are historic, we're already historically there. Um, they're like, hey, just be here when you can. Uh, so when we can be there, the extra hours that the troopers, well, they need time off. They're getting beaten down and overworked. So we're trying to give them time off. But many of them work on, are working double shifts to fill these shifts during the week. Okay, so that in itself, um, we have to try to measure on that because we, we have to we have to monitor the troopers um, and how bad they're getting work, overworked. Okay, so uh, on average, I'll have two, two troopers a week working two shifts, and that's not ideal. Um, so, uh, I'll end it there. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lenny, do you mind, would you mind giving us a little update on where we are with Orange County in terms of uh, presence and coverage? Well, sure. so currently we have contact with seven towns and currently we have two dedicated patrol deputies, um, in specific to Chelsea, as I had stated earlier. We have about three and a half hours based upon the contract amount. 
However, because in the early part of the year there was very little patrol su supply, we are actually able to cover the town for about seven or so hours um, a week th on, per week. Uh, the best that we can really do is, like I said, is to try and be proactive, try and hit the areas that we know that there's problems. We generally don't get a lot of calls for response. We do in Williamstown, but not so much in the other towns, mainly because uh, there's very little hours there. So we're in and out. We certainly don't like to burn up the contract hours in one, you know, um, in one day. We try to uh, spread it out over several different shifts during the day. So we'll be in for a while, and then we go on somewhere else, then we'll be back. We seems to have that. It seems to be the most effective way of doing it. Um, like I said, what we try to do is be proactive and take care of of, of the smaller issues. Um, any major issues, I will tell you, is we're not equipped and we don't have the resources to do as we would defer and request BSP to take over, even though we are aware that they're also short-staffed. But I think that uh, I think that what we need to do is do a better job on communicating with each barracks that covers Orange County with the command staff and so forth so that we can share info and when we come on duty in the mornings we can find out what VSP dealt with during the evening and maybe we can be an assistance or maybe we can be on the lookout for who they're looking for. Um, increasing the budget certainly would, would provide more proactive patrols on our part. But again, we are limited, and we actively, and we are actively trying to recruit uh, another one or two patrol deputies. And um, just like everybody else, we're not having a great deal of success at this point. Great, thank you. And I think just to, to summarize it, it, one of the things that the board is interested in is how might we be able to in, invest. You know, if if that's what the company wanted more to increase law enforcement presence. I, I think just to kind of summarize what I heard is at this point, from a VSP perspective, there's no new contracts coming out in, in the near future. Right. Um, and I, I know, um, Captain, we, we spoke, and while we have a contract currently for $12,500, I, I think um, what I heard from you was uh, Orange County has the capacity maybe to increase that to 20000 Is that correct? That's correct, yes. So it just we wanted to make sure we shared that information with folks. That's that's kind of where we're at right now with our two primary law enforcement. Um, I know that there are there have been other conversations um, in terms of what to do. I, I know uh, Bob. I know you were here at one of our meetings talking about you know whether or not there could be consideration of you know Chelsea joining forces with other communities um, to look at increased police presence. That's not a conversation we've had yet at the board level. We wanted to hear from these two entities as an example. Um, at one point, I had a phone call from Windsor County Sheriff, um, who, you know, who was interested in possibly having a conversation with us. And that, again, as this is the beginning of the, the conversation, if you will, that may be a conversation that we have as well. Um, so those are those are at least a couple of the things that are that are kind of going on in our minds. Maybe what I'll do is maybe we can pause there. There's a few other questions for these gentlemen, but maybe pause there to see if there's any questions that folks may have at this point. Uh, and and if, if you don't mind, please. Okay, I have a somewhat of a question and uh, remarks. I was involved with the intelligence-based policing. <laughs> and and uh, to be perfectly honest, one of their bragging points was the fact that it relieved all the drug problems down in Springfield, Mass. I don't know if you guys read the paper very much, but 90% of the people that are picked up up here are from Springfield, Mass. Sure. Uh, so what I'd say is it kind of moves the problem in all actuality. Hmm. And maybe what we need to do is move it on to someplace else. You know, I don't know. I do know that I am committed to being on a committee or whatever to try to plan for something. But I think with the intelligent based meeting we had here in Chelsea, after about the fifth or sixth meeting, it was, so where is the solution? It isn't going to come that fast. And I think we need more than just somebody monitoring speeds in the village. 
I think that we need to make a commitment for our taxes to go up. We commit and pay for fire protection in this town. We commit and pay for the ambulance in this town. And I think that we've got to commit and pay for police. And I, if this is what we, we need. And like I said, if I'm going to get my little sub story here. At 72 years old, I'm taking a shooting class and will purchase my first gun because I do not feel safe. And that in itself, to have to say, do not feel safe in your own home is scary. Understood. Yeah. Uh, Linda, you mentioned the intelligent based policing, and I've heard a little bit about it, but got me a little more interested. Like, when were those meetings? And, okay, and they, a little they started, don't mind, just I think it might sure. be helpful for They everybody. were in Tunbridge mainly, and Chelsea was attempting to break off a smaller group. And what was happening is a, a trooper from the barracks would come to the meetings and they would fill us in on what was going on. I see. So we were kind of informed because I'm going to tell you, I belong to a couple of groups, the 911 Central Vermont uh, and whatnot. 911 just lost their administrator because uh, he was arrested for dealing drugs. Uh, I mean, so I'm just telling you, well, don't feel safe in these groups just because they have a nice title. They aren't safe. And, and I think that what we need to do is if the people here are really interested, we need to be getting together. Yeah. I don't care if we start notebooks that everybody carries. And I, because this is an open meeting, I won't say anything, but we know a lot of things. Do we know the faces? I think we need to know the faces. And I think all of that stuff is very important. Dash games, those can be invaluable. And I think that there's so much that we can start doing, but we need to commit to, you know, general law enforcement, I think. I think it's gonna, it is gonna be a big financial expense, but I think it's well worth it. Thank, thank you, sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, we'll get to you. Just yeah. A second. Yeah. Um, yeah. The intelligence-based policing thing. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it was pretty successful. We'll get into you know, at at the end of this more. We've talked about what you guys can do, um, and and that's you're right on track. And then I'll post some questions for you uh, about that, um, and give you guys some ideas about cameras and so forth and so on. But that's exactly what you guys have to start doing is, um, this is an impressive turnout, so you guys all care. Uh, so it takes a village, that's all I have to say. Sure, thank you. Okay. Oh. I, I just, um, I don't I don't wanna say, I'd just like to hear from Senator McDonald, if there's anything going on in Montpelier about getting money to get more state troopers and Stop maybe the revolving door at the courts. You know, the laws are gonna maybe change a little bit for all this situation. Legislature doesn't meet until January. Yeah. The governor will well this has been going on for a while. Now. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Right. Um we had a half a dozen seven years ago, eight years ago, we had a a round which was mostly seven in that country. And then what seems to be going on now is a bit more mean spirited. And uh, I'd like to hear from the state police about what 40% down instead of five troopers. You got three? Yes. Physically at my barracks, correct, right now. Are you um, alone or do other, other barracks. Police barracks have similar? Yes, similarity uh, across the state. So there's a, a lack of ability to recruit personnel to perform police services? Well, uh, yes. There's a very long answer to that. And I guess I, yeah, I would put it back to an analogy of understanding that there's a cancer, right? And the state police is just the ibuprofen. Right, so if you take the ibuprofen, the headache 
will come back later, all right? So you have to think in a broader picture here, which is uh, why is recruiting down? Why doesn't anybody want to do the job anymore? Why won't the schools let the Vermont State Police in to do mock crashes? That's a question we need to start asking ourselves. We need to start asking ourselves, why are communities in the state that it's in? These are hard questions that people need to start asking. The media, legislature, everyone. It's the broad spectrum of in the state police. Okay? It's the broad spectrum that we now have to start focusing those tough questions on where were we 10 years ago and where are we now? Have we seen an improvement? Has the rehabilitation improved anything? Has the social services improved? Have they or have they not? And I don't know the answer to that question because I've got my lane. But you as a community you need to start asking those tough questions and going to those people who are in charge. Why do why do the community see the state police or the job now as bad? And why are people shying away from connecting with the Vermont State and the Sheriff's Department and any other enforcement entity? And why can't we get the schools to to let us in? And so forth and all these other questions. I'm sorry, sir. Well, the, one of the things the legislature did last year was to fund judges' positions so the court so that um, cases didn't continue to be put off and put off and put off in the future. The governor appointed five judges last week, I think it was. Um, we're but if the laws turn the criminals out the next day, it's not doing much good. When you arrest somebody, they go to court. And then, and then there is something happens. What's happened in the lab since COVID, the courts were shut down for months. Cases were not heard. Um, that's ask police officers, they'll tell you that when someone's arrested, they got to go to court. If nothing happens, yeah, nothing happens. This was going on before that, Mark, because when Governor Shulman was in, he, he did not want any of these criminals that were convicted and put on parole or, or, or uh, you know, house arrest. He didn't want them to be considered rescinded if they were rearrested after they maxed out on their time. So what happened was, the statistics look like there was no new crimes being done, and they were doing it, and they wouldn't send them to jail. So they're being released into the community again, and it's because of what the legislature did and what the governor did. And the governor we have now, last January, he made he made this rule where he didn't want anybody committed to. to jail time when they can be released back into the community. And that was the big thing. And that's what we got now. We got people in this community that are that should be in. And they're not. So you people have to do something. If we should write a petition out to each town to get something done, but that that law has to be reversed. The one that, that the government put in that you guys passed. So uh I want to, I want, I want to just make sure we're coming back to. And, and this is all good discussion, um, and and I don't want anybody to feel like I'm shutting anybody down. But I want to make sure that we're we're kind of getting back to um, where where we were. We're just kind of that conversation about what resources could be provided um, to the to the town of Chelsea, um, and I'm I'm hoping that maybe our questions can be in the line with that a little bit. We do want to get to conversations about what solutions there there may be. Um, so are there questions right now in terms of kind of what resources may be available to us? I, I know, Kena, if you, if you wouldn't mind. I'm here to listen and not sure. provide answers. But, but I'd like to, I'd, I think we'd all like to know what is different about the, the crime activities today and how they are different from the way they were six or seven years ago. Sure. So, that might help us help us craft the solution. So 
So I want to touch on what Linda said. The same thing is we're only going to get a what we pay for. So if we can spend the kind of money that we spend in a town, no matter what town you're in, on education and donating here and donating there, there's no reason why we can't a lot more money to law enforcement. My big concern is, is that Orange County is telling us they can't or they can give us $20,000 worth, which if you figure that out, what are we going to get? Seven hours a week? Probably not enough still at that point. Yeah. And where are we going to get that? It's going to be patrolling West Hill and, you know, which everywhere is getting broken into and stuff like that. But our crime isn't happening out there right now. It's happening to dead bodies a mile down the road from my house. And I have two businesses and I'm scared to take kids outside. And so I'm looking at a solution that's going to help sure. us. Sure. We've got 113 that is just riddled, just crap right now. We had probably a drug deal going down right here in town on the green, like what, five steps from our sheriff's department. Uh, and you can't call anybody because we don't have any, you know, like it's not enough. So if we have to start looking at Windsor County, South Royalton, who I've been told has also been in some talks with people about what they could offer us. Um, you know, I'm, I say I'm all for it. I don't care. But I also want to touch on the fact that when Ali just asked his question, it just kind of went around in a circle. Like he asked, what are you guys doing? What's going on there? that's going to change. The change isn't going to happen from him or from him or anybody else. The change has got to come from everybody in this town and the state needs to stop kid loving this crap and stop putting the same person probably committing half of these crimes in this town back out on the street five minutes later because they don't have any say over that. It's the people that we're voting for that are doing this every day out there and that's basically you know what it is um i've got cameras i had my house attempted to break in in the spring i had the guy on camera he had his license plate we had a description of the car two officers showed up at my house three hours later i realized you guys have a have a time crunch i realized you guys are shorthanded but when those police officers don't even look around my house but my neighbor comes over with a gun because i'm alone with two girls I'm a little offended when they say, you just need to be quiet. Don't take the video or anything else. So I want, I want that time. If I call somebody, I want to know I've got somebody going to be able to come and they're going to be able to make me feel a little bit safer in my home. Because quite honestly, right now, I'm about ready to like go live on the moon. Because <laughs> it is, it's yep. scary around here. Yep. And it's all taking place right here because yep. it's an easy access, you know, one place to the next. And I get it, you guys are shorthanded, but I think everybody in this town needs to say, well, we need the money there. And and, and that's that's yeah. the purpose for the beginning, exactly. kind of this being the beginning of the right. conversation. So thank you, Kena. It is yeah. important. Appreciate that. I will say if, it, if there's any complaints at all about how my troopers are acting, yeah, please call the barracks and let me know. I'll deal with it. I actually called four times and checked in because they never got back to me when was that? Of it. and i actually spoke to whoever the captain or whatever and i reported the officers and never got a call back when was that it was last april okay so new commander in town so thank you yeah. um so so yeah please go ahead and, and sure enough and the captain thank you so much for attending tonight so record and report is that what we're doing Record and report license plates. I'm gonna text. I text myself every time I see some. I'm not on the calm and I'm right on the corner. I see what's going on and I wander out there and I've got myself a little trouble with the parents and kids in town because I'm a nosy fellow. <laughs> record report is that the thing? I've never heard that expression before. I'll record the license plates and the behavior and then report it to y'all. Yeah, certainly that, that helps. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it's an answer though. Well, so we're we're so I, I want to be clear, this isn't an interrogation of the law enforcement no, folks we have here tonight. So 
Um, <laughs> you know, what we're trying to do is look to, to solutions. Mm -hmm. right. uh, one of the things that I had heard recently, and I think that's a question, um, I had heard, you know, locally that somebody had said, well, I didn't actually, to your, to your question, I didn't report it. But I put it out on social media. Yeah. There's and, been some so, of that. Yeah. So, so I got some backlash and, on that actually. Yeah. So um anyway, did you have additional uh, that was it? I just wanted to make sure that we could do everything we can to help these. Sure. Oh my god, they're short-handed. Understood. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what we want to get to is is kind of how we can do that for sure. That's so awesome. thank you. Um so one of the things may, maybe we could just address that because that, that was a, a good point and thank you. I did hear that. I don't know how true it is. I'm not saying everything I hear or read on social media is true. None of us should believe that. But, um, but I did hear that somebody said, well, no, I didn't report it, but I put it on social media. And so <laughs> maybe, Captain or Lieutenant, maybe you can address what, what process should people be using? Uh, you have to call the barracks. And it's frustrating for people right now because our dispatch is short. So we had to move to this phone tree. Uh, you'll have to be patient. You'll get through. Um, but it's just like also goes. If you see something, say something. It, if you guys as a community and you're getting together in committees or, or groups and you're talking about what it is that is suspicious and what that you're seeing, and there is a vetting process. We do the vetting process, but if you're not calling and reporting, and you're putting it on social media and you're saying the stuff in a lot of town meetings. I led the IDP uh, meetings. And a lot of people would come in and complain. And my next question, did you call? And the answer was no. So you yeah. have to report, give us the information and vet it. Um, sure, there's times where if you see a suspicious vehicle and you call and say, I see a suspicious vehicle. Okay, but it's got to be more than that. What are they doing that's suspicious? Okay, if it's between some odd hours or driving slow, got to get into the details about what you're seeing that makes that car suspicious. We believe you, yeah, but we, we've got to get some more information. Okay, so there's a vetting process with yourselves and you as committees. You can talk about how and what you guys are seeing and what needs to be reported, but if you don't call them, you can't act on anything. And maybe it's just that we take that information and we put it and we vet it, we put it with something else that gives us simple suspicion down the road. It doesn't build us to probable cause, but it may give us some reasonable suspicion or some links to something else. You never know. Thank you. Captain, did yeah, you? Yeah, um, I, I don't just want to repeat what the lieutenant said, but I'm, I agree 100%. Um, but if you guys don't call and report anything, then we don't know. We don't, we don't have a crystal ball. Um, the lady that said there was a drug deal that went on on the village on the village green, I know nothing about it. Nobody called that in. Nobody called any suspicious activity. So again, if you don't call and let us know, there's nothing we can do about it, is there? But I will tell you that we have court officers, uh, two court officers every day in the court, and the front door officer does monitor activity because there's a score right there and if anything happens or something looks suspicious they will call the office to get a response so again i i don't know what happened about this drug deal uh alleged drug deal i should say in the green but folks if you don't call and give us the information that you have then of course we can't do anything about it what hours I'm curious, as far as calling the sheriff's office. Uh, sure. And, and the question was, what hours are there that they, they can call, uh, Captain? Um, our dispatch physically is there from 8 to 4, and then Barry City takes over the calls after that. So they can call 24-7. And if nobody's available for response, we will get the message. But again, um, if it's serious, it'll be referred to the VSP. If no, if none of us are available. Thank you. Um, I think Helen, you had your hand up, and certainly we'll make our way around. Oh, I'm Helen Hessel. Um, I know you're forty percent down in your staffing. 
And Linda, you are, you know, it would be great if we could have a group and money to pay for more policing here. But who's to say we're going to get it when you're already down? And so I think one of the solutions is maybe finding, dividing the violent crime officers or the ones that are prepared to do violent crime. And you're not asking the same person to do traffic control or traffic violations. So that when you call, you can get to the right person for the right type of crime that's been committed. You know, I know drugs is, is drugs and police. I mean, the, the traffic is very fast in town, but we have to put up with that because, um, excuse me, my back. Um, because, you know, we have to address the most crucial thing. And there's so much fear in town. People are getting guns, people are getting cameras, people are getting, and it, and it still goes on. The, it seems as though people who are committing the crimes own the town and we're just standing by, worried, shaking our hands, not being able to do anything. So can we get federal money to help the state troopers to, why, why aren't more people going into the state or schools and doing all that? I mean, so I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to take up the time here. But, uh, thank Sir, you. There are some solutions that may be, and so I, I want to talk with you about, I want you to be the leader. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have challenges in recruiting right now. Uh, so we, uh, we had a regular pool of 700 applicants. Um, now it's 300, and uh, by the time we're running classes anywhere between five to 14. That's for the kit and caboodle, the whole thing, right? Well, that's on maybe on a six-month basis, okay? So, but it's not matching our attrition rate. We're behind. We need more applicants. We need more people that we are going to hire to put into the academy to even match what's going out. And we're not even there yet. We're not even breaking even. Uh, so we haven't seen any trends. So the, the challenges with recruiting, and you can all be the judges of that, we're doing our best. We're putting throwing as much money as we can into recruiting, much time and effort as we can, um, but we're limited by other factors and um, beyond our control. So we can't get those applicants. We put out uh, signing bonuses. Uh, we have perks. We raise our salaries. It's it's a great job. It's rewarding. We have very good equipment, and on and on. Um, but um, we ju we're just fighting that. Sorry. Yep. Can you get volunteers? I know you have school trained properly. Yep. Can you get volunteers come in the dispatcher you said you're down on dispatch, right? Yeah, you have to so get you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. But can you get volunteers who maybe have retired yeah. and they can live on their retirement income and they can be a dispatch from their own home so that it isn't all the the lack of money is why we're not getting it. That's way above my pay grade, getting dispatches in homes. <laughs> I like the idea of thinking outside the box, that's good. Um, but, you know, it, it takes an incredible amount of hours and training to become a, a qualified dispatcher, and nobody wants to do it for free. Um, it is hard work. Some people might want to do it for free. Hey, that'd be great. If you got them, bring them in. No, 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 have time on their hands. I'm sorry. No. That, that, that's okay. Th thank you, Helen. I just want to, there's a bunch of hands in the back. I want to make sure we get to them. Um, there, there was a couple, uh, and I see you, there was, okay, okay. Um, Pat, Pat, I think you had your hand up earlier, didn't you? I just wanted to make a comment. I don't really know what from because I just want to ask, and maybe uh, state police and also that in the chair, but if we call and reporting something, because it's about sharing information and 
often it leads to help on other things. If we call the sheriff's office, will that uh, relay to you? Are you connected to the same systems? Uh, or if we call uh, at night or on the weekend and we're calling 911, is that information shared back to the sheriff's office so that they're right here in our town, they know uh, or have a pulse better on what's taking place? At times, but it, certainly the communication be could be better between the departments and not just Orange County. Uh, with so the login system shares information uh, for the, the dispatch. Yeah. Well, so unfortunately, I, th I think, and I know you didn't want to come up here, but I don't think that Orange County actually heard the question. So um, I heard the question about the communication. Okay. Sure. The okay thank you. Lenny, are you on Valcor? Yes, we are. Yes, we we share the same system. Yeah. So if there's something going on in Chelsea, the troopers can see it on a screen yeah. in their car and they'll know. But now Lenny and I will get together and uh, yeah. where we fall short is um, information intelligence. And uh, Lenny and I will get together and uh, partner up on that. Sure. I think you had a question. Go ahead. Um, uh, the reason why Florida Health is still conceded in Burlington and the National Institute of the State Police is that police have been scrutinized so badly that a lot of people don't want to go into it. And they're allowing citizens to, and back in Burlington, they were making up a committee of citizens to help the government police. I mean, you train them, like this lady says, they're professionals. And you're not helping them do the job. Who's a citizen who just criticizes them when really they're just doing their job? And I think a lot of this has to do with things that you and I have control of. Like I said, the legislature and the governor pass these laws, and they're basically critical of the police department. So they can't do the job, so people aren't going into that kind of work. And if, uh, if we only keep these people, and how many, I mean, you can probably see it. How many of these people do you see repeat that murder in plain field that they just had? They said the police are familiar with this individual. That's the way they work. So, you know, it's like they take them in and then they let them go. Yeah. And that wears on police, right? Let's be honest. You know, I mean, give me a name. You know, I mean, don't really give me a name. <laughs> okay. um, you know, yeah, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you, which I can't, uh, the rap sheet, and we've arrested them. You know, we'll go to town meetings and they're like, hey, you guys aren't doing your job. You know, this person said, yep, yeah, we did. We arrested them several times. Yeah. So I'm not pointing fingers here. I'm just saying it's, it's everything. It's the broad spectrum that I'm asking the town. Okay, she brought some good points. What's your name, ma'am? Yeah. 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 yeah, she brought some really good points, Kena. Um, it's the broad spectrum that you guys have to be looking at. Again, I use that analogy, cancer, or the muscle. We're, we're really just the muscle for the state's attorney's office. Okay, we come in, we'll take that headache away, it'll go away, okay? But the headache's sure to come back. So how can you get to the root cause of that cancer? Well, you want to prevent it, right? You, you'd rather have a healthy lifestyle, good health, good food, exercise, all that good stuff, right? That's look. How do you do And you have to ask those hard questions. How did we get to where we are and how can we correct it? Just like Kevin said, the short term game to this is the long term game to this because just throwing money at the problem isn't going to be the answer. You have to maybe put a little money into it. To get what you guys need here to get something started, but you guys have to look at the long term solutions as well. Can you, excuse me, can you step forward so people online can hear you? So, so we, we, we are going to have, have to ask and, and people to come forward if you would, because it, it just, we're trying to do our best and accommodate everybody in the community by doing in person and virtual and, 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 Right, wrong, or indifferent, that's the way we're doing it. So we are going to have to ask people to come. I'm going to jump a little bit. Oh. So I want to know. No, uh, 
we're, we're gonna we're gonna come back. Oh, you mentioned. Yeah, we're, we're, I want to. There's a bunch of people that still want to raise their hand. So if, if you would please. So, uh, Paul, <laughs> come come as close as you can if you. Want. <laughs> Um, sorry. You're good. Uh, just a quick question. So, um, we have a few questions. Are game wardens, DMV enforcement, or private contractors anything that ever lend a resource as supplemental assistance? Yeah, they they do. Um, we've partnered up with them since everybody's short on staffing. Uh, we've partnered up on. Um, Things such as uh, combination motor vehicle collisions, um, animal complaints, they'll help us out on where they historically haven't in the past because they're they're dealing with hunting laws. So they've they've partnered up and helped helped us in, in regards. We're looking to expand that, but again, that's command staff. Um, if there's something going on that's active, they fly and help us out and do what they can. Uh, they're they're great partners with us. Um, uh, did anybody see the the governor? I think it was last night on WCAX. Yeah. Okay. So um, he came out with a ten point plan, um, and I think and that was a while ago. I think he's coming up with something different. So you know, we're hoping that uh, he'll have some more answers and some ideas that will help uh, help the communities of Vermont. Did I, did I answer your yeah, question? That was helpful. And just to follow up real quick, I know there's some little towns that have their own department. Yeah. Like Royalton had a department for a while. Is that something that's ever kicked off some something like this? I mean, funded our own department and now we have our well, own. I, 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 mean, I think that's part of this is the beginning of a converse, right? community so, conversation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's a great question, Paul. That's I think something that that we as board need to be thinking about and, and but making sure that we're hearing from from the community as a whole. And my, and my add on that, uh, Kevin, is that Vermont State Police supports any ideas that you guys have for bringing in different uh, com combination law enforcement entities to help you. Um, we, in, in addition to what we have for answering calls for the trooper, we have troopers who are specialized in SWAT, underwater recovery. Um, crime scene search teams, uh, search and rescue. These take a toll on us, although we, we can, we do it. And, but it takes a toll on the staffing each day at the barracks because on any given day, these and many other uh, special teams that we have, uh, the troopers are not full time on the special teams. They are troopers and they act part time. So if they're on shift, we have a, a SWAT call, what we'll call that, where the SWAT goes. Um, troopers have to leave our shift to go answer that call and let's say Plainfield or wherever it is. Um, so just something to keep in mind. But I just want to reiterate, we support anything that you guys would do to bring in extra um, help. Thank you. I, I just want to I just want to check in with others on the board because I've kind of got my back to you as well. So. And I don't want to lose track of something that I that I heard was said and we moved on quickly, but I think it was a really powerful statement is that the two of you are going to partner on sharing intelligence and that you're going to connect after this meeting. So I, I just want to highlight like that's a great next step, I think, to start bringing that communication. I don't want to lose track of, of that suggestion that you just came out with and just sort of want to highlight it. Of I think that that's a great, a great step. Oh, did you have did you have your hand up? Yeah, um, I'm not a Chelsea resident, but I am a Summer resident. I have been to this board a few times in the last 50 years. Um, policing is all in one fifth of the issue here. Um, you've got to you got to have the state attorney that's willing to take the to court. You got to have the court system that's willing to actually punish an offender, and you got to have a uh, jail department of corrections and then when they're finally finished up with them you gotta have probation and parole however policing is the one issue that we as a group have the most control over 
It's our funds that are going to make these put these people on the streets. The one thing we've discovered over the years is that throwing 10,000, 15,000, even $20,000 at it, all it amounts to is a presence. We're not getting actual policing. We're not getting investigations. I mean, just, I'm sure <laughs> Lieutenant back me up on this. He writes a speech and they get somebody decided to take it to court. You just used up 15, 20 hours of time if the officer has to go to court and testify. And <clears throat> I haven't met you yet, Lieutenant, but I worked with Hugh, his predecessor, uh, quite a lot of the last year, put numbers together and trying to come up with something that we can do. And one of the things I found out talking with Randolph after they ditched their department, went to a contract with the Sheriff's Department, and now perhaps go back to it. Big money. That's why I came here in the end of May, 1st of June, roughly. Yeah. Before the flood. For us, yeah, it's before the flood or after the flood, Bob. And I talked to the select board about some cooperative policing, getting one, two, three, four towns together so that we could have contract services for our own police department, but it would service an area. And the reason I'm thinking about that is it's response time. <clears throat> I know from an incident just the other day with my son that it was approximately an hour and 20 minutes for a response from the state police. And I don't fault them for that. I know what he's going through. But right here is a lady who has been involved in this community for a lot of years. I've known her for well. I've seen that are on our rescue squads. You know what we need policing for? We need policing to protect them. Do they need to be sitting on the side of the road somewhere while somebody is getting hurt in an assault, waiting an hour for a response? No, they don't. And they can't, and better not, be going in by themselves because they could get hurt. And then what about me? I got a heart issue. I'm dependent on her and the rest of the squad to come get me. If something goes wrong, I don't need him. I don't need him sitting on the side of the road because some asshole decided to stuff a mud rope up his nose, waiting for an hour for the cops. So I think this community based intelligence, which I have been involved with four years now, we've lost what we used to have. Our outpost trooper system is gone. How many outpost troopers do we have here, Linda? Three or four over the years. They were right here in the town. They sat in our restaurant, ate breakfast with us. They were at our ball games. We knew them. We talked to them. We don't even know these people anymore. And until Officer Friendly gets back in this town, I don't want to keep getting the messages just because I'm the administrator of administrator of Central Mont Intelligence Based Policing and Orange County. I don't want to keep getting these messages on my phone. Oh, gee, somebody broke into my house last week while I was gone on vacation. What the hell are you calling me for? What are you telling me for? These are the people that need to know. But thanks for our legislature. And this goes back a lot of years ago. We used to have county sheriffs, just like all the other states had, where your county sheriffs or your primary departments. But there was a murder that happened way right down the southern part of the state years and years ago. And the state decided we're going to have the state troopers. And they took everything away from them, except for handing out some civil orders and guarding the courthouse. 
Our legislature needs to get off their ass, put their money into policing, and cover us. What do we do here as a group? There's a number of things. We can cough up some tax dollars and get a contract. If you're a certified police officer in the state of Vermont, don't make any difference whether you're in Burlington, you're in Chelsea. You're still a certified police officer. In Orange County, we can contract, we can contract with Windsor County or Chittenden County. But the state police don't have the resources to help us. And I'm here because we got a nice, neat, little narrow valley here. And all our crime comes in from both ends. There's not a lot of it crosses over. You talk to the policing that's done in this area. They're not arresting people from Randolph in Chelsea or Cumberland. They're not arresting people from that over here. It's South Rail Pin and our drug island, 8991, coming up the valley. It's Barry and Montpelier coming down the valley, stealing the cars. Had enough of that here lately, haven't we? So, yeah, we need to put some money into this. I'm all for it. I'm doing the same conversation with Tumbridge. I already had it several times with them. And I think the two towns would get together rather than Chelsea having to fund the $500,000, $600,000 startup police department. <laughs> Then, hold it. South Carolina's down there, and they're stripping with their little four hundred thousand dollar budget, and they're more than willing. They already just signed the contract with Cumbridge to use up the rest of the Orange County funds, and they're more than willing to look at this Route One Ten corridor. And I think it's something we need to pursue. Right. Thank you, Bob. So how does that work? Okay. Where Orange County hasn't been in action at this point since basically since the election and the new sheriff had come on. There hasn't really been a department. Does does our town still pay them? So oh, okay. so yeah, so, sorry, I that was just, the, that was the question was yeah, the question was do do we pay and, and yes we do and they provide invoices and to us on a regular basis keep in mind we're talking three between three and four hours a week of, of basic patrols and or responding to calls it's not a lot that's what we're contracting with them for so yes yeah, please that we actually have increased that i believe we started in september our hours increased we recognized that we had additional money in the budget because oh, we didn't you. have policing for the three or four months in this year um and so we did have additional money and we did increase right and, and i think the captain mentioned it they're up to about seven seven hours a week now yeah, yeah. thank you kelly uh, there was a question in the back if, please if if you don't if you don't mind coming up just for to be fair to the folks online thank you I, I hear everyone saying to put more money in, and it sounds like that's a that's a great idea. But I'm curious about what that money would get us. It sounds like there's even if there were the money to get a contract with the state police, that there aren't enough state police to do anything else. And if there's such a shortage of state police, is there also a shortage of other like contracted police officers? And so. Like, how much money are we talking about, and what is it actually getting down in terms of, of coverage? Because um, right now, it just seems like it's a whole lot of hypotheticals and advance, but like no concrete details. And that I think that would be really helpful in knowing, like, that's if that's yeah. Sure, didn't mean to interrupt you. I mean, that's that's where we're starting is that exploration of what that will get us. We've had the conversation with Orange County. It's been an annual contract for a number of years of, I believe it's been, I'm looking at Gail, you know, I don't think, I think the contract amount has been pretty steady and we're at 12,500. We've had the conversation, can we get to 20,000? That's not gonna get us a lot of additional coverage. It would get us to 
six, seven, eight hours of coverage versus three to four hours of coverage. Um, are there are there other options? If folks online can, oh, thank you, Jesse. If folks online can mute, thank you. Um, but part of the conversation is, if it's just law enforcement presence, what else is out there? Folks mentioned Royal, and folks have mentioned Windsor County. There may be other resources out there. So we're we're just beginning that conversation right now. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but we don't know yet. But we, we, we've heard tonight that it would be great if VSP VSP had come here tonight and said, "Yeah, sign us up a contract and we can be here more often." We've heard that they're not a resources or understanding what organizations are. And we need to have that conversation as a community. I think I mentioned it earlier. It's it's right now we're paying, let's say it's ten dollars per every hundred thousand um, of assessed value on your home, and so we're trying to gauge from the community. Okay, what does that mean? Contract with Orange County is I think equates to. I did that wrong, Gail. It's twenty dollars. Yeah, it's ten dollars per hundred thousand. So you know we we need to gauge as a board. What are folks looking at? I, I mean, you know, Mr. Childs just mentioned, you know, four hundred thousand dollars in Royalton for a police department, and I forget what the number was over in Randolph. You know, that's our our overall general operating budget in the town of Chelsea is about a half a million dollars a year. So we're we're trying to understand what what it is and what we could do and what what we may be able to do. And obviously, it's it's not up to the board to make that decision. We got to come before the voters with that. So well, I, I guess the question though is like, if the money were to become available, like, are there like are there police officers out there that could could be yeah. here and and potentially yes, that's fair. And I don't want to answer. We're up in PD in Windsor County. Both have officers available and would control Chelsea. It it's a volume thing, right? Some of the some of the smaller towns have one police officer, two police officers. So if you increase their volume, they can keep keep up with it. So you have to think about uh, maybe growing departments like Orange County and Windsor County, uh, where they have some people who are in the hopper to come in. They just need some more funding. So contracts may put them up to where a level where they can hire more people on. Yes, your the answer to your question is everybody's struggling to find deputies, troopers, police officers everywhere. Um, but there there are some departments that are a little healthier, you know, luck of the draw areas or whatever. Um, but that, that's something for certainly you guys to explore. And um, if you guys bring in department. Um, it looks good, you know, on paper, but in reality, can that department do it? And that's for you guys to decide. And but looking at all those variables is important. Let me so, add one thing. Ah, sure. One of the things is we've got to, yeah, the money thing is, we've got to think outside the box. Do, can we subsidize a Windsor County if you're a lot cheaper, we could rent them an apartment? Right here in town, and that would be a perfect went along, and then it gives them so many hours. I mean, I think that we got to think of those sure. kinds of ways. Those funny. Those, those are those are the types of things that yeah. I think. But sorry if I didn't. Yeah, no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm sorry if I'm being dense here. I'm just having a hard time. With, like the state police have such a hard time with recruitment, and so it's like, how do how does a tiny town recruit more officers? Well, I, I, at least how I've internal. Linda, did you want to respond? So my question is for Orange County. You say you can increase, so our budget goes up to twenty thousand, and you can give us X amount of hours during the day. But that's not when the crime's happening. We don't need more hours of you patrolling one ten at eight thirty in the morning, and that's not when we need policing. We need policing in the evening when crimes are happening and we need quicker response to when somebody's being robbed. Is Orange County in a position to offer us policing at night? Because that is sort of... Currently we are not, but I can tell you that I've worked in agencies that were 24 seven. And even with that, the kind of activity that's going on now, we weren't able to prevent it. Maybe a quicker response, that's right. But you know, you, you're not going to have a police officer at your driveway, every driveway. So I don't want you to, to think that throwing more money at you is going to, is going to be the, the ultimate solution. 
and mislead you because it's not so information is what really helps us get to the root of the problem and if you guys aren't calling and telling us what's going on or you have information we keep all of this confidential nobody tells anybody uh anything about who called or anything or where we got the information from that's how we do it because quite honestly police departments need information from the citizenry in order to do our jobs without that information we are somewhat handcuffed pun intended but when orange county made the cutbacks they advertised that there was no policing in the evening which basically everybody knows the criminals know that as well well i don't know who, who advertised schedule to police at night but at least if people were aware that there was some policing at night uh, in the problem areas then it's gonna hopefully make them more aware and maybe settle down it's not gonna stop it but it might help it is orange county in a situation where they can offer policing in the evenings currently we cannot but we are actively trying to recruit people and get into a better position to do so i will also tell you that we're actually facing an uphill battle um we never announced that we weren't available in the evening citizens were talking about that we never said that we never made any such public statement that would be counterproductive um one of the issues are is you know we're trying to get the budgets through with the side judges and they've cut back a lot uh on what they were funding with the prior administration and it's gone to the point now where they're saying well you should sue us well i find that to be a little absurd but that's their position um you guys are the ones that are going to foot the bill if we do so which is again i find disingenuous on their part but um you know we we need the support of the county that was supporting the prior administration in order to function properly that's another and another issue that we're facing and you can feel free to you know reach out to us um, for more information about that we'll be happy to supply it lenny we have a question from someone online asking if you contract evenings for williamstown currently no we don't vsp responds for evening issues if there's things left over we certainly will address them if we can when we come back on shift um that's what we do right now thank you if, well can i i just want to make there's a few sorry helen i just want to make sure yes go ahead but but would you mind coming up here i'm sorry no come up here so so the the question is about a neighborhood watch and, and that's kind of if i'm going down through kind of the questions is what's next can we do and i think that's obviously a, a potential opportunity so 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 can you tell us the legal outline of like stand your ground because it's pretty vague in the mind so if we're gonna if we're gonna explore like a neighborhood watch we kind of need to know what our rights are so so can, can i don't i don't mean that there's some people that haven't had a chance so i i, I want to go ahead Sean. Uh, this is a question for the lieutenant um i live four miles from pavement half an hour half a mile from my nearest neighbor here you. Yeah. i live four miles from pavement half a mile from my nearest neighbor i have no expectation for orange county or you are going to come save me if something goes wrong. So, I guess it's a related to Kane's question. What is a resource that someone like me can can look to to find out what what le like? I, I guess it's a legal authority that I have to protect myself. Now I know if somebody enters my house with a firearm, and I feel threatened. Uh, my wife is home sometimes when I'm not home, um, but I don't have a clear understanding. I mean, my, I happen to live on what's sort of the Williamstown Chelsea Drug Highway. Um, and I have parking on my property uh, much recently using drugs. How do I learn what I can and can't do? I've been told by some officers, can't brandish a weapon. Can I not brandish a weapon on my own property? I mean, how do we figure this stuff out? Yeah. Um, well, speak to your legislator about a lot of the questions you have there with the uh, 
I guess I can clearly, clearly phrase the question. If you come to me, if you respond to a call on my property where I've ran a firearm, I've shot somebody, how, how do you determine if you're going to put me in handcuffs or not? Simple. Did you feel like you your life was in danger? It's That's the simplest question. Like, yeah. Isn't it actually the way the law is stated that you actually have to have, like, they have to be coming at you with a weapon or with, with the no, intent no. to create bodily harm? No, I, I, if I can't tell you how you feel, him, right. him or her, I could feel in danger right now by you sitting across me holding your cell phone. Okay? It's how I articulate and it's how whole circumstance unfolds okay so um you can't that's that's not it's did the person have an opportunity the ability to hurt or kill you okay there's those standards that have to be there um so if you feel like all the stand there and your life was threatened then you have the right to defend yourself it's as simple as that. It doesn't matter where you are. So I was told so, by the two state police officers that responded to my break, my attempted break in, that my garage door being open because the person was trying to break into the door from my garage to my house, that because we always left it open because we had lots of kids that lived in our house, um, that that was actually an invite to invite somebody to my home. So. So maybe you can answer that, but I want to, uh, we, we have to move on. And there's a couple of things we want to reflect back what I heard, which is there is no clear standard that I'm taking a risk when I defend myself. Because yeah. my wife is five feet tall. Uh, she's home alone. Her standard of fear, far different than my standard of fear. Uh, yeah. But what I'm hearing from you is that responding officers are going to show up at my home and make an assessment of the entire situation and then decide if I'm at fault or if the person who was committing a property crime or a drug crime or something was at fault. That seems vague, which is not your responsibility, but I just want to know, is it actually that vague? It, I, like, if I pull up on someone's house and this shooting incident took place, the troopers don't know who you are, Yeah, right? Yeah, let's take you out of this. Take uh, Mr. X, okay? They pulled up Mr. X's driveway, a shooting occurred. How do we know that there wasn't a an altercation about drug activity between the two of them? We have to do an investigation. Okay, so all the, all the facts have to come out uh, scientifically. Okay, through statements, we have evidence to process. The scene has to be processed. All this has to be taken into account. Did the person have opportunity? Did you feel it like your life was in jeopardy, or your wife's life uh, was in jeopardy? And if those elements are there, then they have the ability uh, to hurt you. Um, then you have every right to defend yourself and do what it takes. Thank you. Yep. So uh, I, I, I want to, th this is really good discussion, but a, a couple of things that, that we as the board wanted to make sure that, that we, we talked about tonight as well. Um, and, and we've talked about resources and what the opportunities are out there. And we were really one of the things that we wanted to explore is, you know, what can we do as a board? Um, and, you know, what, what I'm hearing tonight, and I please anybody else on the board, this is what I've heard. So, um, you know, we, we've heard what resources exist with VSP um, in with Orange County. Um, we've, we've heard that there may be potential, whether that be in Royalton um, or that be with Windsor County. And I had spoken with the Windsor County Sheriff. Um, I have been in contact with the select board member in another community. There may be some options there. There's things that that we wanted that we need to kind of explore more as a board. Um, I guess our question, you, you know, that was just in terms of law enforcement and presence. Um, questions for for the captain and lieutenant. Are there things that we're missing as a select board that we should be thinking about on how we might be able to get more resources in, into the community? I, I would say all options are on the table. Yeah, that's what you should be thinking about outside the box. Um, and take your time to explore those. Uh, you know, grants for the town and other things that you guys could explore. Uh, 
the local PDs that may be able to help out uh, Windsor County and did explore with uh, Lenny about what they can provide and where they are recruiting um, neighborhood watches. But uh, again, uh, talking about the bigger picture is what you guys need to be looking at the short term game and then the long term game. What you guys can do as a community, come in, start asking hard questions to the people who are in charge of making policies, laws, uh, the town, select boards, everybody. Ask those hard questions, have those meetings, and talk about how you guys can be, become a better community. And that may involve um, economic change to your community. What can you guys do to light it up, bring more people in, bring more in? economy to your uh, um, you, you would think that would be something that's um, off the table for law enforcement but, it, but it's true it's true all those things all these factors have to be looked at um, what can you guys do for more cameras uh, we're investigating cases right now and I'm hearing the troopers wish that you guys had more cameras that we could uh, draw on so that's something you guys can also look at as well okay and I'll get with you about that last question you had, okay? So, about the, your open garage. Yeah, yeah so I, I think that collaborating with other agencies because of the shortage of manpower is not a bad idea at all, providing that we can do that. Um, I have, I really don't see a problem with doing that. Um, but again, I caution you all, don't, please don't have unrealistic expectations because we're not going to be able to stop everything that's going on. But I will tell you that presence makes the difference because it ups the ante for them. And one of the biggest ways of, of showing the presence is really get blue lights going. Um, believe it or not, that, that really is a factor in, deter in deterring. It announces presence. Great, thank, thank you. Um, so we're kind of stepping down through, and again, I, I look to others on the board if I'm kind of missing. So, Mr. Things. Chairman, um, yes. if there's anybody that has any more questions, I uh, do have uh, another, another thing coming up in about half an hour. Okay. Well, so, so where we're, where I think we're going to kind of pivot to next is kind of what can we do as a community. Um, and, and also, one of the things we wanted to just mention tonight, because there has been questions from different residents that have contacted different members of the board. What can we do as individuals? Um, you know, and I know there may be some basic things. You know, there may be basic things like motion lights and security cameras, but there may be things that we're not thinking about. I was actually uh, at a gentleman's property today for another reason. He was like, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm pretty convinced that place over there has got trouble and he's going to clear the tree line, you know, so that there's, so he opens up his property so that the folks on the other side, are there things, are there things that, you know, that individual property owners can do, or we should be thinking about beyond, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not saying that folks aren't thinking about that, but are there resources, are there basic fact sheets that we could put out there? Some people have thought it all the way through. Some people may not have thought about it much at all. And so are there, are there resources or, or things that, that individual residents should be thinking about that maybe we're not. Some best practices, I guess, if you will. Before, before you answer that, I'm sorry, but he asked if there's anybody who had a question or a comment. Oh, sure. Yeah, Helen, if you could come back up. I'm sorry. I'd like to let it come up. Yep, sorry. Um, yes, I, I have a, think I have a solution to the work, you know, to get maybe some of your activity in the evening. If you start the day a lot later, if you do your shift in the afternoon rather than the beginning of the day, because then that's when most of the activity is. So that just might, we pay the same amount of hours. I mean, you do the same amount of hours, just do it a little later in the day. I mean, maybe you can get the desk work done later in the day as well, instead of just first thing in the morning. Sorry. Yeah, and actually, we are working on that. It's a work in progress. But again, we don't have uh, an abundance of dispatches ourselves. So uh, again, it's, it's a staffing issue. How many deputies do they currently have? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Cap uh, Captain, they asked, it was just asked how many deputies you currently have. We have eight. Thank you. Eight. So. Yeah. 
in Orange County. So, so if we, so just to come back to the question um, about what should individual property owners or residents be thinking about measures that we may be able to take that maybe folks aren't thinking about. Get to know your neighbors. Um, certainly, and let me put this out first. And this is a hard thing to grasp, uh, but it's just the way the law works. Um, if and also let me preface this statement with the numbers, right? You are way more powerful than the state police or any police. Okay, way more powerful than we are. There's the idea that we are so powerful we're not at all. Um, if you guys stand together and stand up to whatever's going on as a community, that's the best thing you can do. Okay. If you, if a state trooper or deputy is investigating a case and it comes down to the trooper asking for a sworn affidavit or else we don't have prosecution. Okay. If you don't provide that sworn written affidavit, we won't be able to conduct search warrants, arrest people. Okay. Many of you are in fear of that, many shy away from that, but because you're in fear of retribution. But understand if you guys are seeing and looking and more, multiple people see the same thing. And you have multiple people willing to write an affidavit and swear to it. That goes a very, very, very long way with the state's attorney's office. And we can take that next step with an arrest or prosecution. So do what you can for line of sight. If you're leaving town and you have a neighbor, guess what? That neighbor is going to watch your property for you or your neighbors. So as a community, get together, get tighter with the community. You know, in the IBP thing, we were, we made a calendar for Tunbridge throughout the whole year. Every month we came up with a calendar about community events. Or I guess it was, was needlework or whatever, uh, craft fairs, it, it didn't matter. The town was getting together, planning on a regular basis. You know, and I talked about the economic stuff. I talked about the uh, that those type of things, those go with a long way that's more powerful than you could ever believe. Um, yeah, sorry, Lenny, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I was going to, I agree with the Lieutenant uh, statements, but I will add uh, as an example is um, Brookfield. They have a public safety committee and they are in constant communication with us. They give us a heads up about ongoing activity, problems here and there, and, and we are able to go and address those issues uh that's the sort of thing that Chelsea should be looking at and so should every other town so just i'm just echoing the sentiments of what the lieutenant said we you the public uh a significant entity to help us combat this kind of activity and criminal events without you we really can't do it thank you that's a go ahead kelly distracted oh okay. okay i i just wanted to sort of bring us back to like as we're talking about next steps and um i'm sorry i wanted to know i do want to pursue i don't know how much longer we have but really want to kind of pursue like what is are there things like a neighborhood watch and how would we go about setting up next steps for getting the community involved and that's kind of what i put it out putting out there well, we could certainly we could certainly help you with getting that organized, and I'm sure the lieutenant could also do that. Not yeah, that I probably would hit you, lieutenant. I know I probably hit Google on how to get neighborhood watch, but um, no, yeah, he yeah. did. So <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah, it's so easy these days. Uh, they provide good information, and I think they they come up with packs uh steps where you guys can take to get the get get it wrong we did all that last last year when we started the neighborhood oh yeah it fell all apart the first time a bullet went through the air yeah, yeah. I, people got scared is what happened 
but after we got started, somebody got started with the gun. Yeah. And, you know, and again, I mean, I, I think one way we can do it is to, to stand up for ourselves. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying you yourself self but, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think there's quite a bit of stuff that we can do as a community. And I know I put this idea out here a couple of weeks ago and got slapped silly for it. But one of the problems we've got is break through those two doors over there. Open wide ones. Now, I think it's great that the library has wide ones. And I think it's great that the patrons and the citizens of the town have access to it. But what's wrong with walking into the library once a month and getting a password? Because the last meeting I was here at, you were up there. I was sitting over there by the window and watched tiny packages and cash being handed between two cars while we were talking. I think I pointed it out to you. After when I saw you, yeah. Remember that? It's like Gordon. And that. Wi-Fi is great for the town, but the criminals know it. And I think this guy will attest to that. Public Wi-Fi's are almost impossible to trace through. And these people love to come in here with their burn phones and make their call, do their drop, and get out of town. And the ones in town use their burn phone to make the calls to get the stuff brought in to town. A uh, camera would help in that regard as well. Excellent. Well, we're go, we're trying across the street. <laughs> no, you'd be surprised. I guess registrations as well. Yeah, but half of them are either got stolen license plates or no license plates driving around here lately. Yeah, but that's the the answer for no camera is not the solution. Yeah, right. try. I, I know that. I mean, just. But even even a community group. It would be willing and able as well to do some patrol work. And I go out occasionally, but I got to tell me sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning, make it around the park and up to the north end and back down through. And but you can't have eyes 24 hours a day. And that's why it takes a group. And that group of people has to be committed, and they also have to remember that the person that you may be reporting on might be your own son, your husband, your wife, your grandson. And if you're not willing to make that commitment, it's no place to be in a community watch. If you go up to the empty parking lot that's at Bobby Butler's store, <laughs> you know, the store. I. <laughs> I've been well. Usually, I run up and do a little because trip those around. Because come down to use the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's that's become, and then go back up, and then come back down, and then go back up, and then come back down. And somebody was sitting up there with a camera in that parking lot, and Bobby is. You know, I haven't called him because I think he's having a little. There had been three nights ago when this happened over here. When it happened across the street, I would have been sitting at the end of the garage because I was there for two hours. So. So, so, so what? One of the things that you better make sure he killed me. So, <laughs> so, 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 one of the things I, I think that the board and I, I did pass a little note. It wasn't a secret note, but was just asking. And and, uh, um, you know, I, I think maybe a next step for us is to consider um, some form of law enforcement committee um or public safety committee i think as was mentioned in brookfield and i think that's something that the board is definitely going to look into and and stay tuned um we'll probably we'll be looking for volunteers to be part of that um because it, it, there's a lot of work to be done here we've heard it tonight um and and we want to make sure that we're being as proactive as we can um but we also, uh, I'll speak for myself, but I think we've come to recognize as a board, we're not going to be able to do all of this. Um, and so we will be, you know, we'll be, that's something that we'll be looking into. Um, we will be reaching out and having conversations with some of the other departments that were mentioned here tonight um, and reaching out and touching base with, with towns surrounding us as well to see what, what they're up to. Maybe they have some good ideas we haven't thought of. Maybe there's some partnerships out there that we need to do. Um, certainly, uh, one of the things, and Kelly 
reiterated and put a point on it, that coordination between BSP and Orange County. I think that's a, a great outcome of tonight. Um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to necessarily shut this down. If if folks have other questions, um, but certainly this is. Uh, there's a, there's a comment in there. Okay. Um, certainly, certainly we're we get it. We we've heard folks loud and clear. Um, I think we've all heard it tonight. It's it's not. It's both a short term solution we're looking for and a long term solution. Um, I will speak for myself. But I think I can speak for all of us on the board. Please send us thoughts. Um, you know, our, our phone numbers and email addresses are on, on the website. Um, we're not going to pretend that we understand law enforcement and the two gentlemen here tonight and their departments. We need to work with them and, and reach out to others as well. There was a comment. Sorry, Lena. There's a public comment from online. It says, if Orange County can't even send a representative in person, or especially the sheriff himself, can't take the time to attend this meeting. We have our answer right there. So yeah. So I will I will say that that um, I, I will speak in, in terms of the captain has been very responsive. Kelly and I have been talking to him very much, um, and we appreciate that. And he actually had I, I believe I won't speak for your captain, but I believe you had a family function. I, I think maybe you convinced yeah. your wife that you could at least participate virtually because he was going to come to our meeting on December fifth. Um, but because we're all gathering tonight, so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I uh, she was gracious enough to let me do it. I'm on actually taking some vacation time for the whole day as we have some family coming over, and that's why I couldn't be there in person. It's a bit of a trip for me. And the sheriff is um, also taking time off. He's uh, going in for surgery on Monday. So um, that's going to be a bit of a challenge for the next several weeks also. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there... Are... Sorry, I can't even hear you. I'm sorry. Are a great idea because you can't walk into a store with money by anything at the shelter empty, and the shelves are empty. And like through no fault of people have lives, but like all of the stuff that have lives too. Like eight deputies, like someone who's on vacation who is probably on a well-deserved vacation. Oh, they change it very much. At least you're obviously not the answer here. So understood. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's something. And, and to Karen's credit, she emailed the board after the least, the most recent incident, and said, "Hey, what can we do about cameras?" And oh, could I just make a statement to that? Yes, please. Uh, what needs to happen is the state of Vermont has sent the message that we don't like cops. Yeah, no, 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 it has, and I think this is why we're having so much trouble recruiting. Who wants to be a cop when you're called to be and, and all of that kind of stuff? And when you're you're arresting the same person 10 times and they may get out of the courthouse before you can. This is why we don't have a police. So thank, thank you, Linda. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, Senator. I was here to listen tonight. And what I hear is that the state police are 40% down on personnel. If you go to a basketball game, and they have three players on your team, and there are five players on the other team, 40% less, you got a problem. I'm hoping to hear tonight how many deputy sheriffs were there two years ago in Orange County employed, and how many are there today? I mean, to be honest, Senator, we're looking forward. I mean, two years ago, we're, we're looking forward. I'm, we're going to look forward. Um, what's different today? In two years ago, I don't know how long it's been since the state police have been under staff. You can't play basketball with three players. Understood. And and so we, as a select board, are trying to look for solutions. And and these gentlemen and their and their departments are our partners in when I, doing. When I go home tonight, I'll say I learned that the state police are at only sixty percent of staff. Where's how's the Orange County? Sheriff's deputies. What's what are the numbers today compared to a couple years ago? 
Well, I, I would, I would. So, as this is the Chelsea Select Board meeting, Senator, and you represent our county, I, I, I encourage you to reach out to the sheriff and get that answer. Thank you. Second comment? No. Yeah, sorry, we, we, we can't even hear you, but folks up here can't hear you, sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you. A good idea if you would think about getting a petition to have the legislature and the governor try and rescind that where they want to put the criminals in the community that just keep reinstating them sure. and putting them back. That only has been since last January. And that's, look at how bad things have gotten. Sure. I, I mean, I don't want to speak for the rest of the board if, if folks in town wanted to do something like that and present it to the board. Uh, I mean, we'd sure. have to have somebody write it up like a legal person. They, you must have access to a lawyer, right? Well, we do have a town attorney that this board hasn't engaged with yet. <laughs> so what I mean, can we do right. that? Can I? I think a group of us will get an attorney. Right. Well, that's yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to say we don't want to engage with that. I, we're, we're, we, these guys are knocking their brains out, and then it's just like caging up something, caging an animal, and letting them go, and you have to go catch them again. Understood. You know, and I mean, yeah, it's not helping them, and they're on demand. Right. Yeah. So. You know, it's real frustrating, and I think that if we could do anything as a town, I, I'd like to. I would help you. I mean, I don't know if I can do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I know I couldn't do it right off, but Linda just mentioned there may be. I, I think that maybe we ought to see who who is committed here right now to continue meeting. Right. Well, right. Yeah. Because we have to do something. That it, if you keep letting them out, I mean, we have them in the community here now. And, I mean, if you look at that tape from Whalen's there last night, that guy was in no hurry. And you could hear him fire the shot. Even at that, he didn't run away. He just walked up the sidewalk in front of this place. Yeah. Under yeah. So we have to have a way of keeping them in. There's no fear in the on their part as far as incarceration. They're just not. Yeah. They're pretty bold. That's why they're doing it. Yeah. So. I would say that if there's anything that I could do, I would help. Okay. All right. Stay, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Well, no, is the captain, the lieutenant. When I step in front of a very rapidly moving vehicle, because I know it's not a local person and I plates on it, who's committing the worst crime? When they have to swerve to get around me, maybe they'll hit a tree. I don't know. I haven't caused an accident yet, but I don't mind one moment stepping out in front of my driveway when someone rips up the way. Is that wrong? I, I would say not. To put yourself in danger like that? I'm pretty slick. What's your name? Max. Come Max, me. yeah, I, I'd uh, dissuade you from doing that. Um, don't put yourself in. I get a lot less traffic these days. <laughs> yeah. We're <laughs> getting around. What do you, why not watch your own cells? Why not? Yeah. Uh, not showing gun or, you know, yeah. shooting off fireworks or anything. Yeah. Ma'am, I, I still have to answer your question. Okay. So I can wait. I can wait. Okay. So without putting myself in danger, but making a difference, is that what you want from the citizenry? No, I don't want vigilantes. I, I did not. I said okay. not putting myself in danger. Don't put yourself in danger. And don't take things in your own hands at all. Opening, I strongly uh, agree yeah. with the lieutenant's statement. Sure. sure. Yeah. We certainly don't want people putting themselves in harm's way. So okay, sure. If, if, let me let me just wrap up with Tana. Do you have a moment to wrap up some lieutenant? Sure. So, I guess uh, I look to the rest of the board. I mean, I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna end this this initial conversation. We recognize it's a bigger conversation that we need to continue having. Um, stay tuned. I don't know what what that means in terms of stay tuned quite yet um we, we need to talk about it i i think that we'll probably in in i want to just let our guests be able to go um and we can continue that conversation and folks are we love participation in select board meetings so everybody feel free to stay we're going to be here a few more hours so um but uh, so but for the folks that are leaving i certainly wanted to say thank you and appreciate your attendance and re reiterate that we are very open to suggestions and thoughts tonight after tonight moving forward so please let us know like okay.
So, and, and, and Captain, Lieutenant, thank you very much. We appreciate, we appreciate you being here. So, and, and we'll be in touch. Yes, you got my email. Thank you both of you for. Very much. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. And uh, just, just before I leave, um, I would like to tell folks who are present that you definitely should reach out to us with any other questions you have or concerns or ways that we can uh, deal with some issues that you may have. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Folks online, folks online, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a five minute break. So that and, and and we'll jump back on at let's just say eight twenty five because we're picking chairs up and we, we televise our whole board meeting so we just keep it going. So yeah, thanks. Jim. I'm just thinking. Um, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've got to figure out what we're going to do. We got to figure out what we're going to do. So, yeah, um, we've got to we got to get a budget and a town report and FEMA flood stuff. And so, not that this isn't important, but we've got to no, no, no. we got to figure it out and and uh, yeah, we collaborate with another town. Yeah, you know, other towns here. Yeah. I mean, we're we're going to reach out. With, the legislature. He's blaming COVID. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that guy's back out. That was in your house. He's Hello. back in his own house, right? Yeah. Okay. Right, Kevin. Nice yeah. to meet you. All right. See you sure I, I can do it quick i guess yeah this is for the last year
No, I don't see everything I know. Very much. I mean, I'm glad. Thanks. I got a few more questions on the board. Yeah. Thank you. Email them to the three board members you see here. I would have found one email address online. Yeah. Mobile version. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for coming. We still have a whole job. Sixteen still. Yeah. 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 We're all. We're still live. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, you said we're breaking today. Yeah. Twenty-five. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. oh. Thank you. That's okay. We don't. We'll just keep going. I think that's fine. Okay. Let's uh. Let's kind of re-journal if we go. I, I don't know. I read in a paper, you know, when on the select board, I don't know how many people out here know who you are. Usually, you know, say, you go around and say who you are. I'm Kevin Marshy. Kevin Marshy? Yes. Yep. Lightford? I'm Kelly Lightford. Oh. Lightford family? Long time. Yeah. George. George. Yes, my father in law. Yes, that's where I live now. Lena Hoy. Okay. Thank you. No, nope. thank you, Senator. Right. Yep. No, I would. Well, yeah, fly. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, I actually had this conversation with Casey. You weren't in the op. Did she tell you about the conversation I had? I, I said, you know, we may have 50, 60, 75 people. I don't know if Gail wants to do the budget discussion with everybody in the room or if she wants to wait until after. So. Do you feel a little slighted that everybody got up and left when it was your turn? I, I should have I mentioned, please stay. Gail, Gail's going to give us a budget update. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay. I think you're talking about math, and I might as well. Say sure. That. No. Well, like, well, we appreciate that. Uh, sure. And and I was reminded by the senator we should have introduced ourselves. Oh. We're streaming live, and so I'm going to bite my tongue on the senator's feedback. Hey, we still have two people live. Because I may have emailed him after the flood. Introduce I introduced myself then, and he didn't respond because we were looking for resources for our community. Um, we're streaming live. I'll I'll end it there. Um. Anyway, so deal budget and. <laughs> Yeah. But um, the biggest thing that we have to get in mind is um, the insurance that I have to go sign up for. MCC, we've been with for quite a few years. They are cheaper than Blue Cross Blue Shield. Coverage is comparable. I mean, you know, there's no big difference. You don't even use it. <laughs> And um, so, I mean, I suggest we go with them, but it's up to you. So, so just to, to recap to make sure I followed you, Gail, we've been with MVP. Okay. And and so. The other option is we cross the shield. The difference in price is um, the annual cost of the cross the shield is $13,591 for one employee. And MVP is one thirteen thousand. It's not a big difference, but I'm sorry, Gail. No. I didn't hear. I think I heard a very big difference. Yes. Can you tell me those numbers again, please? <laughs> um, it's MVP is one thousand thirteen thousand hundred thirty, and the cross the field is thirteen thousand five ninety one. And and so you need to know this because we need to renew. Yeah. them by a certain date or something yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. I'll just keep sending the bill to MVP, but I got to change it this month so I can pay. It starts ahead. Okay, so it's or for a policy that starts January yeah. 1. Okay, so, sorry, just trying to yeah. catch up with you. Yeah. <laughs> Have we heard any feedback from staff on whether or not <laughs> they haven't said one way or the other that would like us to start <laughs> looking for something different or <laughs> Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not here. I mean, oh, we've been MVP because it was several. Yeah, it yeah. Be a big difference. But everybody seems to be relatively happy with it. Yeah, I mean, it's just him and John right now. Yeah, just you two. So, and I don't know how much John uses it. So I think if we've had no complaints, we continue with the coverage yeah, we have. Right. Yeah. Okay. Stick with MVP. I move. I move to continue our contract with MVP for our employees. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I'll just say I don't want to change because we might jinx Rick. I mean, <laughs> if he's not using MVP, why change? Right. Right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Excellent. Okay. The uh, next thing is I just need to make you aware of the Beamers rates. They go up a quarter percent every, uh, every quarter, or every half a year, every year. Sorry. Can you help us understand? Help us. What, what is that? What is the Beamers rates? Um, what it is is for this, let's see, for this year, up until July 1st, it was 3.75 for the um, employees deduction, and then 5.25 is the count, um, count portion. And this is the retirement system? Yep. Okay. And starting July, 20, July 1st, 2024, it'll be 4% for the employees deduction, and then 5.5% 5, 5 for the counts. So they increase those rates to keep every year to, to basically ensure that they're funding. Yeah, they're able to fund town employee retirement. Is that right? Yeah. I'm just trying to understand the basics of what yeah. that is. 
And that's just John and uh, Rick on that. So the new librarian is well, the new librarian, but the library pays for that. Okay. But yeah, they should need to do that. And, and so that's just something that we need to budget for. Yeah. And um, I got Karen's budget. I haven't entered it in yet, but we can do the same thing I asked you with the Excel sheet. Updated as you get stuff and send it to your you want to. How do and and I know Karen sent a thank you, Karen, for sending along. I think you sent an email. Was it you that sent the email on on what the process was? Yeah. I know Gail. We said yeah, we're going to do this, but we really haven't yet. Yeah. Um, I do have the libraries. I have a few proposed. I have a. Proposed budget and then a fallback if we don't think we can do the initial proposed budget. So, kind of a, a, and I see, and I don't know how it's been done. I know how it was done last year. We definitely don't want to do it that way this year. Um, like <laughs> six meetings in three weeks isn't a great idea. Um, so, Seeing that there was last year's email that there was a process, I don't know if the previous board went, well, probably that process didn't follow its way through because in early November we didn't have a board anymore. But um, what's, what do you, how, how do you suggest we move forward with this scale? Um, I mean, the best thing is if I can get everybody's budgets in, I can enter them, send them to you. And what we have to do is, the biggest thing is the highway and what the select board really involved in a lot because we have to decide, you know, if we can cut somewhere if we need to make the budget less. And of course, the Orange County will have to decide on that. Right. Um, and then it's just the salary. You have to decide if you're giving raises or giving bonuses. So there was a lot there. So I'm going to just try to like w historically have the various groups given you their budgets, or does a select board like Lena just said she's talked to the library? Like, how has that like do folks know that they need to give you looking at Rick? But I'm assuming, well, I'm assuming Rick probably knows. But like, but other groups like as an example, I know that I you know that we need to sit down with with Mike. And, and go through the, the sewer and water budget. I, I realize that's something we need to do and get to you. But, you know, there's various other groups. You said Karen, you know, has given you her, her or is working on hers. Yeah. How, do, how does that, how do we get to that point where we're like, hey, Gail now has everything that she can put into the spreadsheet and then we as a board can react to it? Yeah. Um, I mean, we can, we can put a deadline on it, you know, be good. When do you want us to have everything to you? Just lay it out for us. You're the boss here. Um, is this is the end of November? <laughs> um, probably mid-December would be good because that way it gives you guys room to make adjustments. Because the bottom line is you guys change whatever thing is changing. We all do our own budgets, departments. <laughs> And and then should we schedule time? When does the budget need to be done? It has to be done for the town report. Right. I don't have the timeline, but yeah, it's somewhere in right. The yeah. right. But I think it's February first ish. Yeah. Okay. Like have it done, done. Yeah, and the other thing is, after we get all the figures put in, it's a good idea for at least two or three people to go through, you know, look for spelling and whatever, and make sure that the columns, all the formulas are right. I had like two dollars one year that was not not right. But. So we should be reaching out. As groups to liaise, that were liaisons too, but have you have you made sure people know? No, I, I don't. I I've asked to look some. Well, I'm I'm trying to understand, Karen, how it's been done in the past. Is it the board that reaches out and says, "Hey, 
Mike, you need to do yours. Hey, Karen, you need to do yours. Well, Is that I the think board? It was, I think it was the administrator. A lot of it went to the administrator and then, you know, we can it that way. Because we don't really have one. So I'm willing to, you know, do that. And I thought I had sent everybody a copy of their budget, but maybe I didn't. Okay, but, so that was so that was kind of what I was getting at. You've yeah. at least said to everybody, "Here's your budget." Yeah, because I was going to do that, and I I meant to look at my email today, but I was I was pretty pumped this last week. So. Yeah, most well, crazy time of year for you. Yeah, yeah totally get it. Um, Would it be oh. helpful to pick a date of when you wanted those instead of you know just like mid December? Is there like a date that have that? So well, probably. Um, I don't have a calendar. I okay, so you Earth. work on Friday, so pick a Thursday. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I probably will be working on Friday. So. Okay. So. Okay, so just I don't know how others feel. So I, I, I'm, I'm always inclined to pick a Friday. So it past, doesn't matter to me. In the past, the what I'm hearing is the administrative assistant would just send out an email to everybody reminding them. Yeah. Is that some is that an option for this year or no? I will I can follow up with Casey. I, I don't know. She was gonna send an email out about town report. I don't know if she got to that yesterday or not, giving them a December fifteenth deadline. I'm not sure if she did or yeah, not. I'm trying to think of what I read. I and I think I'm still actually looking for the digital copy of a town report or just hoping it was going to end up with that so so yeah, do we December 15th would be fine because i could I'll probably work they're all be working so um i could enter it send it to you saturday you have the weekend to get it because then we would have a yep. 19th mm -hmm. but that if if you have everything and i'm just i'm talking out loud you tell me if i'm like way off base if you have everything and you get it to us, we could review it at our meeting on the 19th. And then we still got a couple of meetings even after that to fine tune it, yeah. right? So if we wanted to if we wanted to say to Rick, hey, the first meeting in January, come in and talk to us about the budget, we could do that. And it wouldn't put you in a bind? Um, as far as Rick's concerned, I think you might want to put him on 19th. Okay, sure, okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> Well, understanding that things like that's usually the part where there's a lot of back and then the transfer station is another thing that's you know you're gonna have to struggle getting things. Well, yeah, that's gonna be a, definitely a new thing this year in terms of projecting our fees and our revenue. Yeah, yes. so we're gonna have to. So, Bill, you, you, I think you and Jesse are the liaisons. We work with Snooki. <laughs> to kind of what this is what the budget was but uh, Gail obviously you have a big piece in that one too because you know what we're paying right like yeah. you can look back right but here's a question and I was going to email you and I think I did um, I was going to say the board always put that together the transfer station attendants didn't put that budget together <laughs> for, the, um, for, the, for the transfer station right I was just suggesting that they at least talk to the folks that work up there yeah I think so maybe they could come to a meeting yeah. Gil, is it? Maybe I asked you this, and if I did, I apologize. Is it? How hard would it be to look at like the last three years worth of the budget, like in, in kind of like a spreadsheet, and just say, "Hey, yeah, I mean, these, I the it's not could, could you do that and, and put that in a spreadsheet and send it to us? Because as an example, like if if Billy's talking with them about you know just looking at the transfer station budget, looking back over three, kind of a three year average yeah. might be a good way to do it. Does yeah. that, does that make sense? I don't, I don't think want, you I want to create work. I think the transfer station and the highway would be helpful. Well, if she's doing it, I'd love to see it and everything. Cause there's just, there's those oddball things. Like if it's easy enough to do, I don't want to create yeah, work. Yeah, cause I forget but, how I did the transfer station, but I think, I think it was easy to just, and so I was just thinking like this, those, it's like those little line items were like, what the heck is that? And we spent what this year? Oh, well, every year we spent that, you know. So 
December, we you talk with Casey to get a message out December 15th. Sounds like you've sent budgets out. If do you, how do you set, like, what do you send out? Do you say, hey, this is last year's budget, fill in the numbers for this year, or? Um, I've I just been sending them out to regular budgets, just as, you know, what's left and what we've used. But um, and then just I, can, I can put it in a Excel sheet. It's easy enough, and they can have a column to fill in. Okay, and and then I've done that before too. But. And and then it's just you're just like with Karen, you're saying, "Hey, here's your budget. This yeah, year, year. what's what's next year, right?" And that's what we did. Okay, yeah. okay. Maybe another column. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we'll send it out to. When we say everybody, <laughs> who is everybody? Oh, Phyllis, Karen, Rick. I think I sent this to my, I'll have to make sure, but yeah. I just don't, I don't have my town report in here to kind of, yeah. Well, I, I have one, I just don't have it with me tonight, so. Um, but yeah, the biggest, big thing is going to be the salary. That's, and so we did go through all of the salaries last year. So at one of the meetings, we should have an executive session to go through salaries again. Yeah. Is there, has there been a historic, and, and I think I know the answer to this, but has the board looked at, has, like from year to year, they're like, oh yeah, we consider a 1% a year, or we look at, or has that just varied from board to board? I think it's varied from board to board. And there was quite a few years they didn't get anything, so. I'm, I'm sorry, Lena, sorry, I just, I wanted to make sure we were, um, when Kelly, Jesse, and I went through our employee, um, like, benefit package, I know we talked about implementing the cost of living raise, but I'm not, we'll have to look the, the cha those changes up and see if we did that. I, can't, I know we, we talked about it, but I didn't know if we had. We didn't actually, we didn't set anything or we didn't mm -hmm. okay. percentage. We just had the conversation of like that's how we would move forward. forward. Okay, um, so maybe we can. But also, yeah. Can we talked about it. I don't remember exactly. Um, actually, no. I'm so sorry. It was not a cost of living raise. It was, a, it was based on the performance review. I'm gonna, we'll have to look at something we'll come back to okay okay um you mentioned bonuses how has that worked traditionally well for a while there wasn't any i don't think but the past couple of years has been you know a couple hundred dependent on not everybody gets a couple hundred been a part-time or whatever is, is there any, I'm assuming there's probably no policy or anything on that. It's just, no. okay. and has that been budgeted from year to year? Yes. Well, some years. So <laughs> did, did we budget for it? <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I don't remember that being part of our budget yeah, discussion. I don't, I don't either. No bonuses, no. <laughs> Yeah. I, I actually was surprised because I didn't know we did that. A little extra spending money. Um, no, it does not look like we did. I mean, Karen and I wouldn't get one, but there might be enough money in the budget for the highway crew. I mean, they've done a lot this year. Um, yes, they, they have. Probably, they're probably under salary anyway. Um, well, maybe one of the big things that we can, um, one of the things, does, does it make sense? I'm thinking our December 5th meeting should be almost as much as we possibly can entirely focused on budget. Um, yeah. and, and Gail, does it make sense to go through this year's budget? Kind of maybe not line by line, but like what you were talking about, just to kind of like get us to that point. The reason I thought of it is like, oh, yeah. where, where are we? You know where are we overall budget wise and where are we salary wise you know are we going to be grossly over budget i know the the flood thing is an issue but yeah you know i mean 
whether we budgeted for it or not, you look at that kind of total. And does it make sense to just kind of go through, like start our meeting on the 5th with a pretty significant, this is the state of, of our current year budget? Yeah, and I do want me to print you all out one so you have it. Yeah, yeah, if you don't mind. Great. I mean, but, be easier yeah, I always threaten. I was better earlier in the year at looking at it, but it, I mean, if you have a file, you send it along, it might be helpful too. But yeah, I mean, I can just both, but and also we can put it up on the screen. Right. If we make changes right. that way. It's, yep. Yeah. Remember that you need to change. And the line of credits, I did not get to. Okay. Hopefully, by next week, but our money's looking all right for now. The dictated school, most of. Uh, with taxes coming in, how how did those come in compared um, to prior years? There was like we were over two hundred thousand out, and taxes were, you know, done, and they were considered late. But a lot have come in since then. We've got it down. Well, Jane's got it down to about ninety thousand, I think, now, and that's okay. all years. That's not just twenty twenty three. So. That's a good place to Also, oh, there's only nine ninety thousand in overall delinquent okay. taxes. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that's and we Well she had it way down for all the other years, so that helps a lot. Right. Right. Anything else for Gail tonight? Anything, Gail, that we're missing? We just need to and if you have suggestions, you know, like you said, hey, let's do Rick on December 19th. I mean, if you have suggestions on how you want, you think we should roll that out, just just email us. And we'll make sure they get on the it gets on the agenda and that we're thinking about it. Uh, you know, I know I didn't mean, went through a budget process last year, but let's be honest, it was a shotgun. <laughs> it was a shotgun budget process. So, I know I, I know I learned a lot, but I'm not going to pretend I, I understand the, the way the process should be. Okay, and then the only other thing is um, they have like a total of most of the material and most of the contractors we've paid so far we're up to about 195000 That's and That doesn't include yeah. Galfetti and it doesn't, I don't know, do we have any more sites we're doing? Not this year. Not this year. But then um, we also have, um, you know, Town hall, yes, yeah, so, we put out for that. Yeah, that's a ballpark on the roads at yeah. this point yeah. of what has been put out, that. and that's not counting, you know, permanent fix or Edwards, road right? Permanent yeah. fix or the pedestrian right. bridge or anything that's right. to go. Right. That's yeah. yeah, those are, but that's at least that gives us. Sorry, go ahead, Bill. Well, doesn't so. 195 is the money that we have put out already. Yeah. Well, and then another 20, mm -hmm. or 4,000 for AJ's because that's oh, what? And guardrail sons. So. Yeah. Okay. Can somebody do that math? So we're going to be $225,000. Right. Okay. And then ours would be 12% of 12 that. 12% of that. What was the 225? Okay, 22. Never mind. I think I just got it myself. I did 10%. And then, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. I, mean, we'll be, I, mean, that's, I, guess, I guess that's the good news is that it's only 12 and a half. Well, at, at this point, Thank but you. we also have to look at that our biggest fixes haven't been done yet. Oh, yeah, expensive. Ones, yeah. I mean. right. And the other thing is we don't know all what they're going to cover. Right. That yeah, right. yeah I'm, I'm hopeful based on the conversations that we've had in the meetings and the work that Casey's done that from the road side of things I'm, I'm I don't know I'm you know I'm looking at you guys I mean I don't I don't there hasn't there hasn't been anything that leads me to believe there's a lot at risk I mean I think we're hopeful there was one conversation that was had about you know FEMA only has so much money and this has been a particularly bad year across the country yeah and yeah. you know the, the, so there's no guarantee. Right. The other so, thing it doesn't include, I just thought of it, bricks in there. Right. 
then she is putting that together for us so that we'll have yeah. an idea there so well yeah that's part of her right. it's further it's further down on here but casey's next step is do right. yeah. process and we have to think about like our time tracy's time the road crew's time in that emergent situation of being reimbursed for that that it will go towards part of it, it offset some of that match that's a good point too lena and the work that you know we did on right on brook road and hook road so that is also gonna hopefully right. well, it will offset it counts towards match yeah. yeah well i mean when you it's a really good point because when, we, when you start talking about let's just use round numbers our match would be twenty five thousand dollars roughly and you start taking away the stuff that we can say we as a community did and and tracy's got 500 hours in you know what i mean you know i, I don't i don't know about anybody else on the board that's something i didn't i mean i could go back but I, you know we volunteered you know um, right. a lot of time you know, you know there's, there's you know the work you and rick did he, you know there's a whole bunch of things that we may be able to we won't eliminate it but significantly but it did i mean we'll see the real numbers in the larger numbers next year when some of the more permanent work is done on the oh yeah things. yeah that's when we're gonna yeah. have to come up with yeah. funds yeah. those those will come in well, and even even Maple Avenue is they haven't said no to Maple Avenue yet. <laughs> so yeah, they have to consider a single audit if we're over seven hundred and fifty. If we're over seven hundred and fifty on the the road budget? Um any grants that we get. Oh. Oh, gotcha. Right. Yeah, we'll be over that. <laughs> so and that's gonna cost. So what what is that? I, I don't know. I've seen people asking online on email. I haven't seen that price. Yet. But that probably wouldn't even be next year. No, right? Probably in 2024. Okay. I mean, 25, because it would be the following year. Right. Yeah. It'll be after we. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Gail. Thanks, Thanks Gail. Thanks. Sorry, it was such a late meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. So enjoyable. <laughs> it was so enjoyable. <laughs> well, Rick. And Casey put this on here, and we even talked about, and I forgot what Town Highway 57 is. It's right there. One about Billy Lyons, the little side road there. I know nothing about Charlie this. Charlie Crocker owns up in there now. That is still a road. Thank you. I never knew that. That's Portolano, yeah. That's an old town road. So why is it on the agenda? I don't even. Yes. Think. Thank you. Uh, well, no, because the uh, state said. Oh, it's the certificate, right? Not being maintained. We don't maintain it. Which Charlie had come to a meeting about changing it. It's such a dangerous a blind spot to come out of there mm -hmm. wanted to change it and then nothing ever came of it. How long ago was that? A couple years. A year and a half. There's a process you have to go through if you just continue a highway. It's in your folder. So right. But my question is I guess for me I'm trying to understand why it's on the agenda. Because the state sent us a letter. Right. Okay. I don't maintain. I don't know what I've seen. Is that a class class three? That's a class three. It's a class three road. They're yeah. paying us for a class three road and it's not being maintained. Yes. What is the process to bump it down to a class four? That's much less than discontinuance. That I know. Um I, I, I'm not even don't familiar. Have have here and how how long is that road? I don't even uh, I can look on my phone. Wow. What's that? 0 0.13. Yeah. Oh, so 600 feet or something. Right. Is it something? I mean, what would you? We don't do anything to it. 
not now. I mean, we used to once in a while we'd go up and scratch it over. Right, man. but we don't pile it when it's there. Charlie bought it. We haven't. I mean, well, are there any houses up there? there? Not much of one anymore. Does anybody live there? No. Okay, but it's access to a property that. Is there a structure that somebody pays taxes on? Yes. Um, I don't. They. They might not even include that in the taxes. It's an old log cabin, but it's. I think the last time I saw it, the roof had caved in. Yeah. Oh, got it. Oh, that was, that was yeah, it's this online thing, it doesn't look very healthy. The cabin? Yeah, it's not mine. Okay. Oh, so Casey had asked about this. Okay. Yeah, I, I apologize. I probably just. Must be 15 or 20 years. I don't think anybody's even been there. Uh, Portolanos. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, the last time we put some gravel up in there. Remember? Yeah. What's the What's the consensus on what we should do with the road, I guess? Like, should we just go up and Cuff it around and say, yeah, we, we did something, or do we need to look further into making it a class four? Or? What do you recommend, Rick? I, I, I think it should be you know, okay. downgraded. Downgraded or discontinued. I know we had that well, conversation. It, it yeah. It's easier to. Yeah. Well, and I'm I'm reading here that it, it's a little bit easier, but not a lot easier. But I mean, I know we took a position on. I think we have to stick with our sort of precedent that we set of not discontinuing because right. unless there's something really unless there's something glaring that's going to cost us a fortune, but it. So you would think you would recommend Rick that it would be a. a just make it a class four. Does anybody guess. does anybody remember what Charlie's? Charlie's. What was Char was Charlie asking for it to be discontinued? No, he wanted to change the the end of it. Right, it was. Such it a is a spot. terrible spot. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to see. Go up the nice mountain with the greater. It's like. Uh, yeah, and even then, it's, yeah, it's you scary. can run in some close calls. Yeah. Here. I don't even. I gotta go up there. I don't even know where that is. I had. Is it where the old Burger Road used to come up? Like when they redid the one thirteen, is when all that got moved. Because I think it content that the, isn't it the Burger Road would have continued right up through there. No. Whose house is on the other end of the property? That's Charlie's house. Charlie bought all that. Well, yeah, it's. But this is awful. Comes. This is awful, Donald Road. This is the no. So this is the cabin. Yeah. Right across from Billy has his foot. Yeah, you know where my wood pile is. Yeah. It's Charlie's house. Right across the road. The road. The oh, because that's where your wood pile is. Want to stay on this? Yeah, so. That's what my must be at Donald Road. No, this is the road. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, that's my field there. Yeah, yeah. So my wood pile's down here. Yeah, it's like just past Billy's property boundary. Well, do, do, I mean, does anybody do we have consensus to to get back to the state and say that we're going to look at going through a well, downgrade to a class four? Um. I mean, one thing that I was just thinking, I mean, when was the last time that anybody was even up there? You know, like, when was the last time you guys did anything in the road? It's, it must be for a while. Yeah. I mean, it stayed good anyway. So right, you know, right. So I, I guess. Needle or something. Has it now. Yeah. ever been a through road? Uh, it might have been. It was real. You could go back to the old We could go back to the old maps. I mean, that would be sort of like, uh, I, I mean, my my sort of opinion is, is we downgrade it to a, a fourth class instead of throwing it up completely because 
I know there are strong opinions in town that you don't ever throw up roads. And I think that it's going to be, because we'll have to have a hearing either way. Right. And, and the issue that VTrans is bringing up, it says, hey, we pay you, we pay you based on formula for how many miles of class three road you have. So we're getting paid. We're getting funding for, I mean, not much, but, uh, but, but nonetheless, there's funding. Yeah. So they're saying, hey, you either maintain it to a class three standard or you either discontinue it or you downgrade it. So My phone said it was 186 yards. So it's not that much, right. much of a distance, but. I guess my thing is if we, I mean, if we go scratch it around and clean it up a little bit, I mean, are we going to be all set for another six or eight years? I mean, how 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 big of an look at it? Go look at it. Have you been up there at all? So maybe we the first step is we we go look at it and see if that's even a possibility. Yeah. I want to. I mean, other just than, because I'm uh, interested in like, what the heck is this? Other than some down trees, I don't think this. You know, it's not real steep or it's not real wet or anything like that. It's pretty shallow road it feels hard to identify as a road and more it feels well, i had no idea there was anything there a driveway that's right. kind of grown almost well right. exactly yeah i i guess what, the only reason i was saying that is i mean do we really need to go through this whole process if we could go up there once and spend a few hours and and be all set for another six or eight years yeah and then we don't have to go through a hearing at all Right. So how about we have you take a look at it, come back to us and say, yeah, I, I could go up there for a half an hour and make it good. Or you go up there and be like, yeah, no, just get rid of the darn thing. Or right. the class four. Does that, does that seem fair to you, Rick? Okay. We'll just, we'll just put it on a future agenda. I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody from the state's going to be, you know, why don't we plan on talking about it on December 19th? Does that make sense to everybody? Anything flood work update? I mean, I know we had a little to do here a week or so ago, but it yeah, sounds yeah. like that resolved itself and the work on Edwards Road is. Yeah, I just, I'm, I just weren't impressed with it. You know, I mean, we put quantities out there and you gotta be sent close. You know, all the other ones were, you know, within, you know, yeah. Well, and it wasn't just the quantities, but it was also the length. So one was 10 feet short and the other was... Yeah, they're a little bit shorter. They're supposed to be. <laughs> uh, I mean, there, there's no danger of it going anywhere. I mean, but fine there, but... You're not worried about it sink, settling down with as soft as he said that it yeah, is Yeah, the upper one, uh, it's like five. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of soft stuff in the bottom there. But it kind of mean? levels out there, so I don't think it will, but. I haven't been up there. I said I was going to. I just haven't been up there yet. Site there. I don't know if it does by springtime. Right. You know. Where are we? Like, where are we? Under that, like, like our Edwards Road. Well, we met up there and. Read on yeah. putting some more in there. Sites and I think that four and five that we put out. I was going to say, yeah. Did you move Yeah, he puts more stone in it. Um, he left before I got up there. I got up there about quarter to twelve. He's already gone. Um, is there more work you think should be done, or? Well, I think the one that had the. I mean, I did measurements off of what New Boys and King gave us, and that's how I figured the quantities. So, and the, the length was off, but, and I think some more of that bottom should have probably been taken out. I think you would have had to put a road down in there to reach it. I don't think you could reach it. No. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, that part, it's not like the other ones where it's steep below it. It's flatable. Um, I just. You think there needs to be further conversation? Is that where you're going? Well, I don't know if. I mean, if all the protocols were, you know, and everything was right, you know, like, 
I don't know. I never looked to see if he actually had a contract or, you know what I mean? So I don't know exactly. We have a, a light stand on in a sense, you know. Um, I just feel that <laughs> to the other bidders to be half the amount of stone is not fair to the other bidders. Well, in, in my opinion, I would feel different if the end result was what we wanted. But the end result isn't exactly what we wanted. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. He did go back and improve it. But ultimately, we gave him the numbers. We gave him the dimensions. And he made an executive decision to do different. I think at this point, we have to settle in be satisfied with it, but I think in the future we have to be more clear. We have to do site visits with the contractor, mandatory, and um, I think we need to make it clear that it is to follow what we put, not have contractors make their own decisions on the measurements and the amount of material. I'm not sure there is anything we can do at this point to improve it unless we were to have it yeah. take taken all out and start over. And I just don't think that that is, makes sense. I'm just wondering, is there a way to have another conversation? And what happens if you mentioned you don't think there's enough stone taken out or I'm sorry enough material because all that slid and it slid right to the bottom which it is to the bottom but yeah. it's you know it's three feet deep there well, but, but if you got a heat in bug it should but is it to the bottom in there right? the like other stuff will just go and that should stay there but my concern is he said he there so I don't know you know, he put a stone in it, sunk right in. Could he have dug out another X amount of feet down and got to a solid base, and then it's not going to do that? So I guess that I had higher expectations. Without, without, without being there, it's hard to know. Right, and yeah. that's the thing is, like, you, you know, you, if, if you're dropping you stones and, and big stones and they're burying out of sight in mud, to me, that's not the bottom of it. You're you're adding stone on top of is is the whole thing gonna sink in a year? Is it is it is it gonna sink? At that sure. point, probably should have dug a little more to see what if there was any good bottom there. Yeah, did he, he, he know didn't go down it there to see? Reach. I think he would have yeah, well, I got I got stuff over there. I just haven't. I'm, I'm having trouble. I mean, I know the other spot. Is that one right against the brook? That thing on it. Right down okay. Site four, I know we couldn't do yeah. mm -hmm. I have Billy, um, Billy keep me out and ask checking. Is there, and I have no idea that if this is even, and I don't even know, and I don't know if you guys want to talk about it further. I know the three of you, I don't know. Um, is there a way to, I mean, what happens if there's a problem and, um, next spring well that's my concern and do we have any reason to think i mean is it you know do you sign off with a guarantee can we you know like yeah, you don't you don't you don't get guarantee yeah, yeah. Guarantee. there's no there's no guarantee <laughs> yeah i think it's been my struggle though well so a, a question i have and it's just general because this type of work is interesting at best um especially the way we we approached it right wrong or indifferent we how we approached it rick said it i mean if the stone key is a good stone key then it, it'll it'll stay it it should stay but there's times even a good stone key i mean having been involved and you, you know you, you don't you don't know and i'm not i'm not trying to say okay, we can't go to a guarantee because there's just no mm -hmm. it, 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 you need to write that in the contract and this type of work you just can't put a guarantee in a contract because the bids would have been two and a half million dollars <laughs> yeah. yeah. oh. like now moving forward you know like that it will come back and repaired or i don't know yeah. 
but once we accept it, once we accept it, we've accepted it. Okay. And, and that's my question. Do we think that we've accepted it? I mean, I think that the worst scenario would be is if it did slide more, the top, it would just slide all of it. Right. And then you just have to add some more. I mean, it's not like you're talking $10,000, $20,000. Right. You could just fix it. Like, okay, so it wouldn't be an okay. extremely amount of money to fix it. Okay. Had to, you know. do, do we feel, and I just don't know because I wasn't there, I mean, all the other, we did work like this on South Washington. We've done it in a bunch of other places. I mean, do we feel like those quantities were there? They keyed the stone in. Like, did you see it? Do we, Do you know? No, I weren't. I weren't there. Okay. Every, I had my doubts on some of them, but okay. I, uh, I was just, I and I'm not putting that on you. You Rick, like, okay. hey, you should have. I'm just trying to get like yeah. big picture. That makes me think. Um, maybe we wrap this up you know, when, with what you just set up, like we don't necessarily, you know, and do we just kind of reset forward from here in the future of just, That's what I think. Yeah. yeah, I, I think we have to, but I, I do think that we need to, in the future, we need to be more clear. We have to have mandatory visits to the site. And, and I think in the future, we need to hold people more accountable when there's such a difference in, yeah, I mean, I mean, you and I talked about. It. I mean, the, the way to make sure, the way to make sure that we don't end up in this situation is to do what not, well, and is to do what none of us want to do, which is we go and we get a very detailed survey and we get a very detailed set of engineering drawings and we get a very detailed. I mean, I'm not saying Rick did anything wrong because I did the same thing sitting here with you guys on the other side. We said x amount of yards. You know, he said 136 yards. Okay, cool. Call it 150, right? Like. It, there's there's and it's acceptable it's an acceptable way of doing it that's what, how towns have done it that's how chris bump said to do it but when we get in this situation it makes it really difficult because there's not it, it's I, I don't know i said it to somebody it's like it's like saying hey can you come put a new roof on my house cool can you give me a number and put a new roof on my house well are you insulating it are you putting new slapping on it like that's kind of what we did and, and i'm not saying we did anything wrong it's just to get to that point where you can say that the only thing was the quantities were there and right all the other ones were off a little bit but not half. right no that's a big difference yeah so do you you know that the other ones were pretty close in quantity but i do want to just say that was rectified after the conversation though right that 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 amount changed not that much not significantly oh nice. i think a little, uh, yeah a little, a little under I hear what you're saying. I'm just I'm wrestling in my brain as what Kelly just said. All right, so we're moving forward, and what Lena said is, how do we avoid this again? It's that's that's the that, that's where I was going with my thought process. Was like, yeah, it's it's just it's hard. I think it was a lesson learned on many different levels. In the yeah. next year, when we go into these bigger projects, that we're just going to have to be very careful and very you know, clear. The thing is, if you, if you thought that it was that much difference you know i would have thought you would have said you know that, that was a communication yeah, thing yeah yeah i i agree yeah yeah i mean the, the ones that we do next year when we're doing a box a large box culvert you know i don't know how you feel about this but you just write construction engineering services into your engineering contract and they make they work with the contractor to make sure it's done and then they say to us yeah they did it I mean, I'm assuming that you probably don't want to oversee several. Well, it's just like double. I mean, unless you stand there all day, you know. Right. Right. They might. Right. Oh, you know. yeah. You wanted two feet of bedding underneath that box. You got 18 inches. Yeah. Right. I mean. I mean, 18 is the people feet. you hire. Is you got trust them. They got to do it right. You don't. Right. Right. But I think to Lana's point, I think that's the only way. For that type of work being as much as it's going to be because those are going to be much more expensive than anything that we did it, they're going to be more in total than everything we did we just we do what we need to do to make sure that we have the details and we have somebody overseeing the work to confirm that it's done because that's a that's a hell of a lot more money. well and of course the other, 
the other thing is too a mandatory pre bid cuts out a lot of mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. I mean, he did meet Rick up there and look at the site prior to, so he should have been on the same page. Right. So just, we, we're we going to consider that complete then at this point. Yeah. We need to put it in our brains as <laughs> lessons learned and what not to do. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Rick? Uh, we're supposed to put the guardrails on Doyle Road tomorrow. Um, I think after that, we got two culverts that we got to get done. We get another break. Oh, good weather. Got to get that. What are those? The ones on Pepper Road and ones on down in Tensmore by Randy Words. One on Pepper Road's got a whole one. Got to get that. What culvert is that? Uh, How big of culvert is that? The one that's there? Yeah. 15 inch. But it was, it actually was damaged before. And I fixed it, but just temporary because I thought we were doing the and aid up there. So we were going to do it all together. Yeah. But then with the storm, they let us extend that to next year. So right. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have had it done yeah. this fall. Gotcha. But that one's. I mean, the weather's halfway decent. Is that something you guys will do or put the backhoe? Hopefully. Depends how frozen it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally, we still didn't have that excavator, huh? No, I know where there's one. Yeah. <laughs> it's tucked away for the winter. <laughs> but yeah, I think. Uh, we got all our plow stuff ready, except for we don't have our on. Anything else? Sand. Yeah. Cool. Sand is all. You're not going to kick off your season tomorrow morning, that you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to let Rick go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I but wanted to bring up one thing that I wasn't we even thinking we about that. Talked about last year, and Rick and I talked about it, is that we had touched base about stockpiling some gravel for the mud season. Mud season. And then didn't really get the time. Is there still potential time? Is there money? And the location would have to be at the old the uh, old sand pile location for the year, which would be a headache for people who live on back roads that would like to get out when their spring thaw and there's no material. January. Not like in, uh, so hard. That's not really a good spot. We will, anyone up there. <laughs> we will get some grief for it, but is it worth it to have the material on hand? And then the second, the next question is, is, is there money in the budget for it? Oh, yeah, I think that, that has been blown, maybe that's the conversation we have at our next meeting. Does that make sense? I know there's no doubt. But, right. Uh, and but, then the pit close. Uh, you can stay open in December. Okay. Depends on the weather. Right now, they don't have much anyways, but I think that's my only other fear is I don't know how much more coverage is going to want to stockpile. And well, there are bigger other projects in. So. Uh, yeah, but they right. stockpile I hope something, right? right. And I don't know how much will be left. Come how, spring. How, how much are you talking about, Rick? I would say you have to use 1,500 yards to, with, with the freezing and stuff. With what, I'm sorry? With freezing, you know, on the winter, the freeze. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, so you want it big enough. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't processing you. Yeah. I mean, later in the spring when it thaws, you could well, yeah, then, then, but like you wouldn't necessarily all be available. You'd, want, you'd, want, to have, you'd want to have enough there so it didn't completely yeah. freeze up on you. I mean, I might go and work out a deal with McCullough's, you know, send the bill. You know, done that in the past. How, how much is a yard? How much money would it cost? Yeah, like 25,000. At least 20, 25,000. Something like that. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying we should 
the way, but part of me just says we don't know where we have with our budget with all this other stuff. I mean, if it can wait, I don't know. What do you guys think? And and yeah, uh, I mean, I can certainly go either way. But I, I do think we we probably don't need to spend any more money than we need to at this point, but. Also, to Rick's point, I know that McCullough's have run short most of the summer. Right. And, yeah. uh, That's and, the worst and, part of me. Right. <laughs> and uh, no material for that. Right. Right. It's going to need it. We're going to use it anyway. The, regardless of how tight our budget is, if we need it, we need it. I mean, it'll be a different calendar. It'll be a different budget. We'll have a new budget start January 1st. Historically, how much have you stockpiled? Right? We've never stockpiled any like Well, I'll take it back. The state, they were helping out the towns. We stockpiled it down there. But at the garage, we only put up usually four or five hundred. It's not enough to freeze this hard right there. So the old sand pile spa, like you said, we're going to get grief like, for it. But if we explain, for the year and that we had had plans to make room at the garage, but due to the flood, that did not happen. Do we have plans to make room at the garage? It, we talked about, we talked about, about more of the bank where the sand is, so it'd be up closer to the road. Uh, uh, a little brook that goes down through from Brown Road. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to dig that back. Okay. I mean, I'm, 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 rem I'm remembering that. now, but. That was pretty wet in there, but wet with the sample. Right. Well, um, if we put stone in it, it won't, won't be wet. <laughs> Are we allowed to do that? Is that, can we stockpile material there because it's a floodplain? I don't think, I don't think. I don't think. Where? Oh, at the Heathfield? Heathfield. Good point. Oh, I'm sorry. I was still yeah, down. No, 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 right. Okay. No. Yeah, that, Billy's, okay. Bill's How actually. How do you get away with putting sand there all those years a very large historic issue i think i think i think that might be the answer in terms of stockpiling there well, we just do temporary temporary right well i'm just not that i obviously uh, I'm not worried about any stone getting washed away from right there, but I'm just thinking that might be a concern from well it, people that have an issue with it, I guess. Well, and, 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 and right, and I'm not saying regardless of whether or not people have an issue with it, if it's filling the floodplain, and, and I wasn't here the night of the flood, but as an example, the water yeah, came, gave, the water it didn't get that. I've never seen it. You know, it didn't get up to there. I'm just, I'm just thinking about how close it was to the sewer plant. So it, it didn't make it up there. It, it went around the boat on the back side. Yeah. Okay. So so then it is just the technical issue of it being right. a floodplain. Not how is it any different? I mean, it's temporary, but how is it any different than logs there last year and the logs that are temporarily going to be there and the material from Hutchins? I mean, I, I feel like if we're allowing other people to do put stuff there temporarily, how is our material any different than that? Right. I mean, it's not a permanent thing. It's it's temporary. Uh, yeah. I'd... We're going to get grief for it, but is, is it worth getting the grief it's, if it's for the greater good of the town and having material to put in roads? We have a lot of repaired roads this year, and I imagine that come spring, those could be real problem areas because they're not as compacted. I mean, is it worth having material? Right, I mean, so is it worth having material on hand is the question. I'm my biggest fear is a pit not having it. Right. In the spring when you need it. When do they usually open up? I forget. First in March. Like this last year, we needed it. Right. right. This last year, That's we needed problem. it, and they didn't. Right. You know, they weren't open. Oh, we've had to haul out of South Perry or out of uh, Rousseau's in South Perry. Has McCullough ever, would they consider us having a stockpile up there? 
No, I, yeah, I, I just didn't. I mean, wow, well, they really didn't. It's not I haven't, I haven't been, been, been up there for years, so. I'm fine with uh I mean I think that's probably a good idea to do that. Um if McCullough's will sit on the bill until you know, first of the year. If we don't haul it till if we don't haul it till the middle of December oh, anyway, okay. you, Yeah. We get thirty days to pay for it anyways. <laughs> uh, I'm still thinking it's July. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're still gonna pay it within so so I'm thinking. But, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say the only thing is placement of it, which. Well, I mean, part of me wonders if we put it on the agenda for the December fifth meeting as temporary stockpile of stone at the Heath Field. Oh, there you go. And if people want to come talk about it, they can. Yep. And if they can't, then at least, in, in fairness. There may be some folks that would say to us, "Well, you made the decision to do it on a night you wasn't even on the agenda." And, and that would yep. be fair. Yeah, that's fair. So, what what I might suggest is we put it on the agenda for the. And I, I hear what you're saying, but we put it on the agenda. We put it specifically temporary stockpile of stone for mud season at at the Heath Field, and then if folks do have a concern, they can talk to us about it. Yeah, and we'll do the budget with Gail. But and you can look at, look and see if there's anything to do with flood. Right. No. Right. Sounds good. Well, I know we're gonna buy the stone anyway. Either uh, right. we're gonna buy the stone either way. Right. So if we can get it ahead of time, uh, I think that's smart to do that because yeah. I have a feeling that McCulls is gonna be very bare this spring. Yeah, they only have to are starting on the Order. Yeah, they don't have a right big pile of chop rock there. So, yeah, because they're taking a lot of the big stuff out. So right, not right there. Yeah. No, I know. And if some of these other towns decide to stockpile, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to haul out of Barry. Mm, no, no, it doesn't. I think that's. A, a, I would suggest that that's kind of a good way to make sure that, and, and we can yeah. explain that. Hey, we're looking to. Next summer, create the space down at the town lodge, but we didn't get to it this year because of the flood. And at yep. least that way, there it's yeah, because it was transparent. That we talked about prior to yeah, the transparency is there. Yeah. Okay. Well, sounds good. Sounds good. Anything else, Rick? I'm get the shoulders done. I saw that. Yeah, looks good. Nope, I think everything else. Well, I'm just gonna survive over there. I saw that you know, and we have team update, but that was just more from Casey that just said, "Hey, she's entering the, she's entering the next phase, which is the details." So. Yay. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Thanks, we'll let Rick. You know. Thanks. Good early morning. Sitting for our long day. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for sticking out. Oh, it is snowing. What's that? Yeah. Okay. Next on the agenda is transfer station. Unfortunately, Jesse had to go, but Bill. Oh, sorry. What? About uh, Kelly's. I have a very quick update on the transfer station from oh. Jesse. Um, they are. Purchasing, they're actually, they're in the midst of doing mock-ups of what we're looking for. So they've said what they're doing, what it would cost. Now they're doing the mock-ups. Um, I don't know the. Oh, oh, that's fine. I just, it's just me doing minutes. Okay, sorry. Um, whoever the the company. Yeah, Jesse is working with the company. On the printing of the tickets, um, they're finalizing the mock-up. There'll be a two to three week turnaround. The printing, but believes that January first is still a go. Yay! So one of the things we said after our meeting was we took public input, and we said we weren't making a decision that night. So I think we, as a board, have to. We got some great feedback, but we also got you know we had some great questions. We also had a fair amount of support. I think we need a kind of formal motion as a board that says. 
you know, I, I'll say I didn't hear anything that night that said, don't do it. Don't do it. I heard a lot about kind of logistics and the outreach, but we've got to figure out. But. What are, what are there other folks' thoughts? I mean, I know it's late, but yeah. No, I agree. I think it's a. I think we move forward. So is there is there a motion both for the the punch cards and the the recycling stickers? Move to approve the use of punch cards and stickers at the transfer station, starting January first. Second. Any discussion? Are there any points that anybody thinks we should coming back to that meeting? I I left actually thinking. I, I'm not sure that everybody probably was in support of it, but I think that the townspeople understood the logic behind it. Um, I, I thought, um, yeah, that it was kind of like, yes, this makes sense. I think it's a, a good first step and it's going to evolve in the next year or two. So it's a good place to start. Cool. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Moving forward. One of the things, and I, I know Jesse was talking about it, and Billy, maybe you could follow up with her, was just we were going to put a mailer out to all residents we're going to send out hey here's the details and that's something we can if you want to follow up with jesse on that because i think you're you have the transfer station liaison just yep we, we just need to make sure that that's moving forward and should go out sometime by mid-december okay. had a person come in and asked if they were there for sale today cool <laughs> the cards. thanks for the enthusiasm <laughs> yeah well, just so you know but in my schedule, we will be working December 26th through the 29th. So somebody will be in the office prior to you guys going January 1st just to sell them. And has anybody touched base with Will, seeing as he got broke into and seeing if he has any problems with still having them there? I don't think that's happened since the break in was yesterday. So not, yeah. not yet. But I know Jesse was planning to follow up with Bill. Okay. Next, and I think Karen, you wanted this on on here was the digitizing of of town records. And I know we talked about that, and I think you were going to go get us some information, right? I only made one of them. If you want, I will get. So I'm just going to say digitization benefits. This is what it provides availability for res residents, researchers, lawyers to view and or purchase at any time, not when the office is open. So um, decreases the wear and tear on your physical record books, less cash sales at the office if they're buying online. Um, streamlines the process for the recording of the clerk, um, and it will be ahead of the timeline for e recording having a system in place before e-recording is mandated because there will be a report by 124, 2024 to, from the state archives to other departments in the state about um, modernization and uniformity of how we're doing records. And I don't know where we'll go from there. So downside, we'll lose some fees for the vault we currently charge four dollars an hour, um, but it averages like two sixty nine a month, maybe. Some recording income will need to be towards the monthly contract. Average monthly record recording income for twenty twenty three right now is thirteen fifty three a month. That's what's that's what just you're this year. Say that again. That's your income. No, that's the recording income that's coming in. I just took whatever we had for many months and i divided oh, okay all. right yeah right that's that's the okay so i'm looking at four systems um gov os will not have any costs um till i see their thursday presentation um i thought i was going to see it yesterday but it was just another person contacting us to see how much we needed and where we were in our process 
uh, Avenue Insights said they're still putting costs together, but everything's up 20% for 2020, and they're saying the average cost of the system is $31,000. Pot, when I talked to them this year, said the initial setup just going forward would be uh, $10,000 with a $350 a month contract, five year contract for $21,000. And then if you wanted to, do indexing going back for years would be 18,000 on top of it. Um, but we can just um, go forward and then the clerk has the ability to do, to back, go backwards when they have time. Okay. So they do the initial and then you can continue. Right. All three of those companies actually, I believe can manage e-recording. Right now the software I have is just Nemeric software and it's literally the, an index there's no digitization to it. They have nothing set up for e-recording when that comes down the road. And they're the cheapest of everybody, but there's a reason why. Sorry. Um, I'll have more about that. Um, and I wanted to ask if you'd had a chance to read the RFP at all. I'll be honest, I have not. Okay, I'm going to wait until another meeting. Yeah, and I'll sit another. down with Casey and see if I can refine it a little more. Question, Karen, is there is there funding out there for these grant funding? I have, looked for, I have not looked for funding. Our restoration fund to date right now is $14,450. Um, so this isn't going to be able to come out of all that restoration fund because you but, don't want but to. But that might cover half of it. Right. Um, if you go with the middle of the, middle of the road, it would be the pot system and it would be like the 10,000 they're talking about to set up and um, the, the monthly and the, fee. The, the $350 a month. Do you, do you I have? I don't think that's payable all at once. I think that five year contract, they've just billed you monthly. So I don't think that's an upfront cost, but I'll find out. Okay. Have, have you sent that stuff to us? No, I just made it today. Okay. Oh, if you were, if you wouldn't mind sending it, is it okay, Karen, if we put that on? I don't know when. I mean, what what is the? I'm not I'm not saying this isn't urgent, but is this something we can wait till we get through the budget? Well, it's yeah. something well, that would need to be added is, to the budget. In order to put my budget together, I added the middle of the road costs. Okay. In there, and that's what I sent to Gail. Okay. And you're gonna look at it and go, uh, because it went from like a thirty-seven thousand dollars to sixty. But your first year with the initial cost is going to be expensive. And then each year it will just be the contract cost. Right. But if we went with what we went with, if we went with COTS as an example, that would only be 10,000. It would only go to, right. it would only go to 47,000, right? Right. Okay. No, that's what, that's, I'm, I'm quoting numbers because I'm looking at my budget oh, okay. in my head. Okay. Sure. So, but what about it? I'll so. go. I mean, I know right yeah, now we're using the like, ARPA money as well. No, it's not. But it was on the list. Digitizing okay. yes, some of it was, was on, on the, list. the ARPA list, so potentially there might be yes, so that's ARPA what we're money freed we up to reduce suffering. So last year's budget, 2023, was 45,567. That was the actual, and the budget I'm. Dave Gale is 60,267. Okay, so that's gotcha. And I'll scan it and send this to you. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, I think it would, I, I, I'll be honest, I just, the last couple of weeks, I haven't. Yeah, I know, it's not It's not a, a barn burner by any means. I mean, it's the roads important. Are more, no. roads are more important, and so are people being safe. Well, you know, um, but so, I'd like to get it done sometime this year, so I want it in the budget. Could, no. Should we put that as an agenda item for our December 19th meeting? Yeah. Okay. We should also think about looking into and adding surveillance to this building to be added in yes. the budget. Well, so I was going to suggest, and that's a good thank you for reminding me, I was going to suggest we just put security of town properties on a future agenda. Uh, so we're talking cameras, we're talking. But all the, yeah, I'm just thinking like all these things are now going to like, that's going to be added to our budget yearly. Like, well, yeah, I was, I was thinking 
we put it on an agenda to have a discussion. Yeah, right? Like sense. as an example, the property that I was at today, the gentleman showed me an $800 camera that was linked to his computer and he could go back and he could find this and he could see everything. And, you know, I don't know if that's the right system. I'm just saying. Do you want that one on? Which agenda do you want that on? Next one? Well, uh, it should be on the next one because we're going to be getting into budget and it's going to be gonna divvied up into each problem. Well, I think, yeah, I think we want to. I'm only being cautious of our next meeting, just saying like budget, budget, you know what I mean? So we don't talk. Yeah. We don't get too far into the weeds of which kind of cameras and that kind of stuff. We say, hey, what do we think? And should we be our town garage? Right. We need to be able to. Casey, what, on. what do we think? I think the next one before we get too far into budget. All right. Next is town report. And I, I had a conversation with Casey the other day. Casey was going to send out notices to everybody and suggest that she needed the report by December 15th. I did not take notes of my meetings with Casey, so I am somewhat recalling this from Casey, if you're watching. No, um, um, we'll tell Casey to watch from 943 on. Um, the idea that she was going to send out and then what we needed to do as liaisons is follow up and say, we want your reports by December 15th. Now, there may be several people, several groups. I thought of the ambulance because they put in how many total calls did they respond to in 2023, right? They may say, well, we can't do that. Well, can you give us everything and then give us your total number of calls, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say that can go in to the formatting. Right, well, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's the kind of stuff, but, I recognize Karen and, and Casey and I talked about it. You know, you, Gail, others have that concern on how the heck are we going to do the town report. Part of it, as and Karen, please speak up if I've got this right. And the conversation Casey and I had was all of the reports need to be in and in format. And I know, having been on the prudential committee for many years, that Somebody had to chase us around every year on February 1st to say, so right. So if we can focus on the reports and getting the reports and making sure they're formatted, that's a huge, that's a huge burden for the town report. If getting them in early January and being done with them. Well, we didn't use, I didn't think we formatted them. I think they sent them to us and we sent them to the printer. Okay. Well, right. How, however, so, so good point. Getting reports in, maybe I got ahead of myself. Getting reports in is one. Yeah. Getting the budget in it is the other. Yeah. And your warning that has to right. don't care about we, that. Right. And we have to do the warning. But if, then if we're working with the printer and we have all the information, and, and that's where, can I think, was it you that said earlier you have the digital copy of the town report for us? No, she doesn't. Oh. Yeah. No. Okay. Send I sent you a PDF, but I think that's not what you were looking for. Yeah, because you, you can't. Edit it, or, well, because you, you're not supposed to edit it. But yes, yeah, kind of looking for what they started with. What, what yeah. Yeah. So it seems. So I believe what Casey and I talked about was having a conversation, having a meeting with the printer that just says, "All right, what do you need?" If you can read a simple email from Casey to the printer, what do you need? Right. Because right. I'm new at this. Right. And, and then that that leaves us the cover. Yeah, we could make something fun and offer community members to send us their own artwork for. Oh, Carrie was here tonight. You know that last year. We could do a nice picture of the town. But... Get one of. Yeah. Covers. Yeah. Well, I was thinking because because I think Carrie is like chair of the Chelsea Arts Council, or for, uh, I'm never going to get it wrong. I can I could ask Carrie and say, hey, do you think you could organize and th that's a good idea, Elena. Like just say, hey, the town is out there and then we can maybe do it online and people can vote for the one they like. I don't know. I don't yeah, make, make it, it fun. fun. Yeah. Make it interactive. I'll, I'll reach out to Carrie. I've I've been talking with her about some of this law enforcement stuff, so I can 
but what? <laughs> I liked that idea. <laughs> That's a really good idea. So, from a town report perspective, it's a great way to get some artwork out and having people actually looking at, mm -hmm. at the artwork. Of like, I was just thinking, like, oh, this could go. Yeah. Anyway, I think sorry, I'm done. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like excited. No, um, at night. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I didn't see it, but I know Casey was going to, and she just may have not have gotten to it. And I know she was away. I think this past weekend, but getting that email that says, "Hey, give us your town reports," but it's up to us to follow up to those groups that were liaisons on to make sure that we get them in. And if we're able to do that, that is a huge burden right. to the overall town report building. Fifteenth, right? That's what, yeah, and that's what Casey and I talked about. Understanding that there may be some that's like you may have to insert a number later, and that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I actually, feel like I'm ahead of the game in that department. But the? In the, my liaison is getting. I feel like I'm ahead of the game because I already got the libraries. Karen's all over hers, and Rick and I have already talked about his. So I'm like, don't look at my list again because I the only one I remember is Frank King in the cemetery. Cemetery, and then um, administrative, right? Right. So, so next on our agenda, if we're good with town report, are we good with? I have three. Sorry. Oh no, it's okay. Are we? Are we just chatting. How many, sorry. How many reports we had? I'm sorry. You're starting to lose us. We're getting tired. Um, yeah, I hear you. Um, next on the agenda was approved minutes from October 17th. Any edits? I did not have any edits. Those I did get a chance I to. move to approve the meeting minutes from October 17th. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes from November 7th. Those I had not had a chance to look at. But that's okay if others have. Give it a chance to look at them. We want to put that on the next meeting agenda. Yep. Um, Next on the agenda is to approve orders. Move to approve orders. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is administrative position. Kelly, I think you had an update on that. So we have a very solid draft, I would say. When I read it, I was really like, like going through it, it's very, I like these. Comprehensive. It's very comprehensive. I don't want to use the word. You've borrowed things out there. Uh, and, and then we had a very brief email exchange about waiting until after that, not putting it in for this week and getting it in for next week. Mm -hmm. um, just because this is not a week that people really sit down and Right. Off, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. And so it's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're we're ready to launch. Good. And I think that we make a decision because I know in the past, like we ran it for a little bit, and then I think we run it until we have a response. I don't think we run it for two weeks. I think we yeah put it in, and then when we start, when we get some responses, we're happy with. I mean, we don't have to do it set time, right? Just want to make sure it continues because I know at one point, like, yeah, and specifically say to keep it running and it got stopped for a right. week. So I think that we keep it going. Yeah. Well, and, and, yeah, I think we just, we initially say we're going to run it for three weeks and then oh, with the understanding that we just keep going because we have to pay for something up front, right? Is that how it works? Yeah. I think in mind, we would put a date, but I'm hearing not necessarily, you know, like we would, um, how does that work, Karen? You're the one. Do you can you just say like continue to run it until we stop and build? You know, they're gonna want to date. Yeah, they're gonna want to date. So and start with a month. With you oh, again. Well, I guess I I meant of you know giving a date for people to apply. Oh, okay. Oh. 
but I don't know. I mean, this is going to look, this looks very different than our admin position, mm -hmm. which is what we wanted. Um, I mean, it's more of a, what I would call it, professional level, but it, it's. I think we run it for a month and then deadline of applications in are actually looking for cover, not actually applications, but looking for cover letters for resumes. Um, Level yeah. Level yeah, and I would say like close to the end of that month, and if we haven't received anything, we change the dates and run it for another month, right? I mean, yep. All right. Anything else on that on that one? Executive session. Do we have any need for executive session? I'm not aware of any. Oh, we've reached that magical time. The one we've all been waiting for. Okay. Second. Aye. Aye. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing that we'll put on our next agenda is law enforcement. Um, it's going to be an ongoing. Oh, I intended to have a little bit more conversation about that yeah. when we came back from our adjournment, but. It was still chaos. Should we continue?